These events and all of our weekly meetings are sponsored by our uh, are provided by our sponsors. Uh, Hershey Yoga Associates online at pyapc.com provide accounting systems and uh, support and business consulting. You need to check those guys out online at pyapc.com. Also, Ludica Neely Group is an intellectual property firm. Uh, they have an office here also, and they have an office downtown. And anything that you need for as far as uh, copyrights, trademark, patents, you can talk to Robbie Robinson at Ludica Neely Group. He'll take care of you. And Neighborhood Zur is also sponsored EOK. <coughs> That's my company. You can find them online at schnerd.com. They provide tech support for small monthly. <laughs> and we have a lot of employee building. A little bit about what's going on with entrepreneurs in Knoxville right now. We have we've all we, we implemented a uh, membership fee and a member due last year. It's hundred dollars a year as a membership due. And uh, something we've changed this year though, we just had a couple of board meetings and decided that hundred dollars a year. We were just having it as you have some skin in the game, you're participating, you're helping with EOK and the programs that we do. But now we've decided uh, we can do more with that hundred dollars. <laughs> it covers your entry fee to the quarterly events. So that hundred dollars covers your four quarterly event entry fees, plus it covers the uh, the celebration of the party items that. So when you're paying your dues, you're covering all those expenses. This morning we're going to have a great program. If you have any questions about membership or about uh, membership dues or volunteer opportunities inside of EOK, just talk to uh, Carrie back there in the back or Lisa right there. And uh, let's see. Oh, and I also want to thank Tech 2020. Sean Carson and uh, uh, John Morris have just been great to us for a long time, very good partners. They allow us to use this space uh, free of charge and set up everything for us, and they're very helpful. And Tech 2020 is just a cool organization. has some great shows that they put on also, some great uh, conferences. So you got to check them out. And they let lots of community organizations use this space. Uh, Tennessee Inventors Association is another one that uses this space. Today we're going to have multiple speakers, workshops, sessions, uh, bathrooms in fact this way. Uh, and I will turn it over to Chris Coyne right now to introduce our guest. Thank you, Ms. Roll. Yes, Roll. Thank you, Neil. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's get some blood flow. Shall we do that? I'm not a fan of passive learning. <coughs> no, nor should you be, right? So today, this is going to be incredibly interactive. We're going to have some PowerPoint because we don't have any choice. I think it's part of the rule book somewhere. If you speak, you've got to have some measure of PowerPoint. But we're going to do a lot of interactive stuff. The purpose of today is to work on you. Not work on your company, although that's going to be part of it. Not work on everything else you've got going on in your life. Today is going to be about working on you. And we don't take time to do that nearly enough. Because when we think about working on ourselves, we think in terms of being selfish. We think in terms of, of wasting our energy. I should be doing something for my company. I should be doing something for my family. I should be doing something with my community or, or anyone else. So today is really going to be about you. And you're going to hear me emphasize that throughout this entire day. The two people that we've asked to come share some time with us today are going to help you discover more about you. And then I'm guessing, and this is just a guess, based on years and years of experience, most of you, when you come to a workshop like this, you're going to take a ton of notes. It's going to go into a really cool notebook. Some of you have even gone as far as buying a new notebook for this workshop, right? And that notebook's going to have a nice cool little label on it. It's going to say, you OK, cool in one workshop. And you're going to take a bunch of notes in it. And you're going to be really fired up. And you're going to get back in your car. And you're going to be back in that crazy traffic. And you're going to get back into your life and back in your world. And that notebook, you're going to take a look at it maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. Then it goes, we're all good notebooks go to die. Somewhere, <laughs> or somewhere, or whatever. That's not what today is about. Today is going to be about creating an action plan for you, which obviously is going to translate better into your company. Two people that I'm going to further introduce uh, in, a, in a little while Damon Rawls, who is sort of my words, not his. He's kind of the entrepreneur of entrepreneurs. He doesn't sit still, he's doing 50 things at one time. He wore a cool bow tie today, which I'm excited about. Yeah, I'm here in front of the camera, right? Uh, 
Uh, the theme of today is about inspiration to application. So we've also invited Jonathan Williams to come with us. Jonathan, one of the most humble guys I know, uh, started an organization called Penn State Veterans Business Association, which has received accolades all across this region. They're building chapters in, in other cities in Knox, in uh, East Tennessee right now. And he's got the governors and the mayors and all kinds of other people on the side, and he's done some great, great things. So today, we want to think about you. We want to think about inspiration and how we apply that inspiration to everything that we're going to do. Okay? The way the schedule is going to look is we're going to get, up, we're going to get our juices flowing here for, for a, a few minutes. Right? We're going to bring Damon up to get us started. He's going to introduce some of his great ideas, like being going from entrepreneur to entrepreneur. Right? We're going to take the morning and we're going to introduce you to some of the application level stuff. And then we're going to have an opportunity to, to work in small groups to start asking the kinds of questions that we should be asking all the time as entrepreneurs. Why I'm doing what I'm doing, how I'm doing the things that I'm doing, how I get that to mean something other than empty words uh, in a notebook. Then this afternoon we'll look at, at Jonathan, we'll give Jonathan an opportunity to talk. And then finally we're going to do a session on action planning. Now, true, full disclosure, we did have a third speaker lined up and that didn't work out. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at an incredibly powerful video called Starting With Why. Some of you may have seen that before uh, by Simon Sinek, who's kind of a thought leader today in developing people and developing organizations. And then before you leave, the most important part of the day is you're going to have an action plan. So you're not going to walk out of here with just notes, but you're going to walk out of here with an action plan. What you want to do over the next day or two days or week or month or even over the next year. Right? And you should know by now, especially those of you who have been involved in the OK, that that's what this organization is for. Right? This organization is, is very organic in nature, although it has some formality to it. It's an opportunity for people to come together, to share ideas, to inspire one another, to help one another, uh, to create new visions for companies, and then figure out what we need to do to take that inspiration to application. Okay, so that's kind of a look at what today is going to be. As most workshops go, this day will fly by. It's 9 o'clock already, we're going to get it till about, till about 3. Okay? In order to become an active learner, we're going to get up and move. So everybody up? And what I want you to do is I want you to form four lines, and I want you to come over sort of in this area. We're going to have four people in a line, one behind one another. So come on, don't be shy. Just find this no Get in a group. You've got an odd number. I'm going to pick my line from the race. <laughs> four lines. Yep. Four lines. So one. Two. How many people we got? Four people. More than four people in each line. Let's see what kind of numbers we Four. Four. This is going to be perfect. Four. Four. Lisa and Mike. Okay. Good. Okay. Damon, you bring your group over here. And you face that way. Face. Okay. Karen. Sorry, Karen, come over this way. Right. No. You're gonna face sort of this way. Okay. Okay. Now we met. Jessica. All right. Um, I'm gonna have you just kind of turn and face this way. Okay. Now, when we think about teamwork, right? It's not really something that, that we think about too much with entrepreneurs, right? Because the very nature of the word is individual. Right? But we realize that in order to be successful in any kind of entrepreneurial spirit, we've got to have a team. We don't do anything by ourselves. And so even though we spend most of the day doing and creating by ourselves, we need to learn to lean on one another. We've got to learn to reach out and ask for help when we need to. We've got to learn to be <laughs> just like that. Right? We've got to learn what it, why it's important to come to meetings we can and why reach out and reach out and support each other. So we're going to do the box class. Right? Anybody not familiar with what a bobsled is? You've seen it in the Olympics? Mostly, mostly, mostly men, but there are uh, certainly some outstanding female bobsled teams. <laughs> They're a little closer than, than what we're going to get today, normally. But the purpose of this exercise is to teach you, I think I need to get quickly, get the blood flowing quickly, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> get those juices flowing. <laughs> I can guarantee you, I've got a lot of energy. I don't have too much energy in danger. Right? So we're going, to, we're going to need to be ready and we need to be in a learning mode. You're going to get three commands from me. <coughs> Back from the military days. Right? You're going to get change, 
switch and rotate. And now here's, let's demonstrate right here with Jessica and her. Alright? This group is going to stay together as a team. So put your hand, stand, put your hand on top of Jessica. And then from there, okay, good. And all I'm asking you to do is just kind of march your way around the room. But when I say change, <laughs> when I say change, Jessica and Jonathan, the first and last people are going to change places. You got to keep moving. You just got to change places. Okay? When I say switch, the two and three people in the line are going to switch places. All right? When I say rotate, you're going to keep walking. Everybody's just going to rotate 180 degrees exactly where you are and keep going. Okay? Absolutely. So change. First and last are going to swap places. Switch. Two and three are going to swap places. Rotate. You're going to just keep going, but everybody's just going to rotate. Okay? Any questions? Should I have had everybody sign a disclaimer? <laughs> Any questions? Right? Now you join like this group, so everybody hands on shoulders. You're a team. You're a bobsled team. Your goal is to get from A to B, and the mobile sky for B is one of the good stars, okay? And when I yell out, we're going to get the moves going, ready? Change, switch, and rotate. Ready, Mark? Get set, go! I show some enthusiasm. That's what you All right, change! Keep going, keep going, you got to keep going, going down the hill. Don't bump in anybody. Switch! <laughs> Rotate. <laughs> All right, keep going. Change. <laughs> Rotate. <laughs> Switch. Change. <laughs> Rotate! Switch! Rotate! Change!
We got four bobsled teams. We're gonna see who's gonna be the most efficient at making the change. how you're going to react to the things that happen to us as entrepreneurs on a daily basis. Okay? So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw a couple of uh, uh, couple of wrenches into this thing. We need to be listening, we need to be responsive, and we need to be energized. We need to be listening, we need to be responsive, and we need to be energized. You ready? We just point to Go! Change! Go, go, go! Look at this is like just about everybody got into a circle. Switch! Rotate! Change, rotate, rotate! Keep going, keep going! Change, rotate, rotate! Sorry, I'm sorry, y'all. Switch, rotate, switch! All right, go ahead. Let's get some energy. Let's get some energy. Change, switch. Rotate, switch. Change, switch. Okay, everybody stop. We're going to throw one more in there. When I say, when I say, when I say loose, that means everybody scatters and you go hook up with four new people, three new people. Ready? Everybody get in your groups? When I say loose, that means you're going to scatter and you're going to find three new people. Ready? Go. Change. Change. Switch. switch. No, that's not switch. Rotate, change. Now rotate. And change. Loose. We are good, bud. Oh, that would be good. I guess we got these people. Change, switch, rotate. <laughs> All right, one last man. Everybody give yourself a hand. All right, guys, take the seats. Take the seats. And when you get back to your seat, I want you to take a minute and I want you to share with your
your table mates what you learned during that simple, goofy, energizing exercise. What did you learn about entrepreneurialism? Because everybody's going to learn something different, so share it with the group. What did you learn? Okay, this is where we this is where we make our medal. This is where we take inspiration to application. What did you learn? What did you learn about that exercise? What did you learn about you? What did you learn about entrepreneurialism from that exercise? Bring bring There's a market for you. So the the caffeine is not sufficient? No. Communication is important. Communication is great. Well, share as a group. It's not clear, but okay. Communication is important. How did that play out? How did that play out in the group? It was it was very important that we all um, took cues from each other and we physically guided each other to the next stage. Uh, and that you guys were changing switch rotate. Um, everyone. The leader or follower in the mix, that's cool. Which is all part of being on the team. And you can go to all the team. Communication, capital C, right? Raise your hand if when you started your company, it would have been a whole lot better for you if you had more people that you could talk to about the journey, about where you were going, about what you wanted to do, ideas. Somebody pat you on the back, somebody say, nah, man, that's probably not a good idea. Somebody you can collaborate with. Absolutely, right? Not coincidentally, EOK does that. It's part of why we exist, right? Yes, ma'am. Everybody has the common difference. All right, say more about that. <laughs> well, people, people, people from the place just trying to do things. All three things. So to be successful in business, would you say it takes laser focus? Not just focus. It takes laser focus, right? It takes. We have a, a, a cacophony of noise around us all day long. We got economic challenges. We got political challenges. We got business challenges, depending on the industry that you're in. So to have laser focus and and to be able to hear things as they are off, right? Again, this is a simple, goofy, energizing exercise. That's all it is. It's meant to get up, get your blood flowing, so you're ready for the first speaker. Uh, but there's a learning element to it. Communication, laser focus. What else can we learn? Well, I'm going to focus multitask. So when you get three commands at once, you have to pick one. <laughs> well, there's research out on that right now, right? About multitasking. Is, is multitasking, generally speaking, beneficial? No. It's not, it's not actually possible. It, neurologically I, speaking. I heard, it, I heard it's called neurologically rapid attention switching. Yeah. And when you... When there's a cost to switching, also. right? And there's a cost to that because once you, when you're always switching your attention, you can't give anything the focus for the things that are important to require true, true effectiveness. So the challenge with multitasking is we lose our focus, the laser focus, which affects our communication. That's right. That's right. All right, so in terms of team, that's an ex exceptional point. In terms of team dynamics, we have four, in this case, there's four people you're working with, right? Do all four of those people bring exactly the same thing to the table? Yeah. All four of those people, and, and this sounds trite, so forgive me, right? But you've heard the argument before. If two people agree all the time, then it's not necessary. Yeah. Right? You go into an organization, <laughs> consult with them, and try to get them to help them cut costs and stuff, and you find these two people, and they're like the dogs in the, in the back of the window. <laughs> well, you can save 50% of your costs just by getting rid of one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about cutting costs. I mean, I'm just, if you can't 
if there isn't diversity, and I don't mean just diversity in how you and I have different lived, I mean diversity of thought, diversity of the way we approach this. Again, another wonderful element of the OK in when we get together, particularly on Wednesday mornings, just to share knowledge and to hear from different people and different perspectives. An incredibly important point. Yes, ma'am. So, yes, chance to to brainstorm. So, before we were out with we came up with a plan, and then you made this switch groups. And then nobody's got one because the plan they had was work because there's no time or there's no way to communicate. So you need the system, but you also need a way to communicate the system to go with the rapid change. Very good, yeah. That and it good. wasn't fair that I did that. Well, last time that. I mean, you had your process, you had your plan. How many people have a plan for the business? Even if you don't have a written full page, 20 business, 20 page business plan, you got a plan, right? Well, it's not fair when those kind of things happen. It's not fair when money leaves the economy in this area where you're. It's not fair if you're in some kind of real estate development and you've got this incredibly great idea and then the market falls. But to your point, to your point, we've got to be responsive, right? We did. We had a backup plan to our original plan. So our original plan was Wednesday morning at 8 o'clock. We had a backup plan to our original plan. So up front and left, and everybody on the back went right, and we moved like this. And then the backup plan was whoever was behind would lead the person, like with a nudge, to move in the right direction. I thought about that. You're, you're absolutely right. That wasn't the intent of that. Yeah. That's what you got. Mm -hmm. Now, there's, it's the three terms, we'll kind of end on this note, and we'll, we'll transition to Damon, but um, the three terms are also very purposeful. In the book, in the books that I read to try to get energizers and, and, and excitement flowing, I'm sure it's not meant this way, but think about it from an entrepreneurial standpoint. How often, on a daily basis, really, on a, on a daily basis, mm -hmm. that's not melodramatic, do we have to change? How, how often do we have to switch? How often do we have to switch our position on something? I don't mean value based, I mean just switch our position and say, well, I'm, I'm not going to go in that direction anymore. I can't. I can't, I can't sustain that. So I'm going to. How often do we have to rotate? How often do we have to, we've been looking at the same thing for so long, advertising and marketing, graphic design, a great example, right? Artists by their very nature look at things just a little different than most of us do. So a simple rotation sometimes is what it takes you know, to get new energy and to get new excitement. Okay. The theme for today, who did I say we were going to work on? Correct. Who? Who are we going to work on? You, right? So take out a piece of paper, and here's what I want you to do. I want you to simply write a sentence. That's all I want you to do. I want you to write one sentence on what you're going to take away from that exercise. Because it wasn't just to get your blood flowing. It wasn't just to get your, your mind engaged, although we did that. What are you going to take away from that exercise? And that's going to be a foundational piece for what we're going to be doing the rest of the day. Right? I'm going to be asking you to not just be entertained. And to not just have fun, and to not just open your mind, but to, to make it personal, to make it real, to make it accessible, right? Two gentlemen that we're going to have here speaking today are going to help you do that, right? But I don't want you to just listen to them for their experience and their talent and their success and all that. I want you to listen to them for what you can take from them, steal from them, as it were, to make it your own, right? So let me introduce our first speaker. Um, so I went through a speed networking thing. Um, I don't know, a year ago, maybe, I don't know how long, maybe a little more time through the Knoxville Chamber. I gotta tell you, it was a little weird, right? I've been married a long time to my best friend, and we have a great, so it was it was equated to speed dating. Right? The only reference I have for speed dating, and I hope we're not offending anybody, is the movie 40 Year Old Virgin. Have you ever seen that? Right? There's a scene in there of speed dating that's just weird, just weird job. And so I'm thinking, we're gonna be in a room, and we're gonna be moving around, talking to people. But then it occurred to me, what a brilliant idea for network. Just get 20 or 30 people in a room together and set up in a circle, and they just move. And so we get a chance to spend two or three minutes together networking. So I meet this, this young cat named Damon Rawls, right? He's full of energy. He didn't have a bow tie at the time when I saw him, but the guy's doing like 15 different things. Now, I'm recently retired from the military. I know what I want to do, but talk about a, a, a switch and a rotation from the completely different culture, right, to this life outside of the gate. I can honestly, and I've told him this a few times, um, he was exactly the kind of person that I was looking to connect with. 
right? Somebody who's done it, somebody's got a lot of energy, somebody's got a lot of knowledge, right? And it's just book knowledge, but he's done it. He's done it. Owns a Janet King Enterprise, owns a bunch of other things, he's into well dressed, as you're going to see. Uh, he espouses look and image in all that he does, right? But the biggest thing I will say about Damon, and, and I try to introduce people in a very unorthodox way, is that Damon is willing. Okay, let me, let me tell you what I mean by that. He's going to give everything he has, he's going to work as hard as he can in whatever direction he's in, and he's changing directions once again to, to do some different things. But when you go to him and you ask him for some time, you want to network with him, and you, and you want to pick his brain, and you want to get some of the stuff that he has, he's willing. He's not just willing because it's his business, and he's not willing because he's trying to drum up more business. He's willing because that's who he is, right? So when I told Leo that I'd help get this workshop going, who to invite and stuff, he was the first guy. So please help me welcome a great friend and a guy who's going to take us through the inspiration to application piece and share with you a lot of great stuff that you've done, Dave. Yeah? Oh man, that that's a good one. Um, I need that notebook, that Manila folder. Right. Is this Manila? I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Wow. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, thanks for the invite, guys. Um. When people say warm stuff, it's kind of throws you off a little bit. So I'll, I'll pay you later. <laughs> you make me feel good, man. Um. Thanks. Uh, this guy is great. Um, all right, I'm a nerd by nature, so y'all don't understand. You, you, all right, cool, cool. Uh, that's why it's nerd. I get it. Uh, so I give a lot of information, and I like information. You can do with it what you want. So I've got some handouts and some stuff that you can take with you. Um, and we're going to jump right in into this. And since we're an intimate group. Go ahead and ask questions, and let's just drill down into some stuff. If you've got a question, let's just drill. Um, let's not be formal. So, everybody, throw us your name. I don't want to know your last name. Just give me the first name. Yeah. Lisa. Yeah. Lisa. Yeah. Lisa. Yeah. Warren. Leah. 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 Eric. Stan. Eric. <coughs> <laughs> All right, I got some names. Okay, let's. Oh, where's my clicker? I can, I can run. Oh, you're my clicker. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, Human clicker. And it's all the phone. Well, you know, because you've got to flip out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> name's Damon Rawls. Um, originally from Jacksonville, Florida. My folks live in Alabama. Um, so I consider myself a Bama. I don't care. I like Bama. I'm not, I don't like Alabama. <laughs> Let me be clear about this. I don't like Alabama. I like Auburn. I'm an Auburn guy. Okay? All right. I like the state of Alabama. All right. Okay. Now that that's clear. They destroyed Notre Dame last night. I don't even think Notre Dame was awake. Anyway. Um, I kind of a little bit about me. I come from a family of entrepreneurs. Like my great granddad had a business. My granddad had a business. My mom had a business. So it's kind of like in me to be obnoxious and to kind of do what I want to do. Uh, so, but I've worked in corporate America and it just it wasn't. It worked for a while, and I learned, and it just wasn't my thing. And so I had to kind of find my zone, and my zone is not there. So um, I own a, a Jenny King franchise. I started a coaching company probably a year and a half ago where I do business coaching um, and then some, some uh, life coaching also because they're, they're similar. So you can't really have a business without a life. So we do this. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you have a business and you don't have a life. <laughs> Sometimes it's how I feel. Um, we actually just launched the Aristocratic Store, which is, a, is an online men's retail um, operation. Hence, both um, um, I wrote a workbook about a year ago because I would, I would be out speaking and, or 
started talking to folks and they would go, well, how do I do this? And I go, well, if you want to get in the business, this is what you have to do. You kind of got to do certain things, you know. Um, and, and this presentation is loosely based on the workbook. So, um, but I just got tired of the questions. I got tired of the questions, so I thought, well, if I create a workbook and somebody can go, here's the seven steps to, to foundationally have the business that they want. Now, it's not going to be all the steps, but foundationally, you've got to have certain steps in place. So, um, I was 40 under 40 in last year or whatever, um, <laughs> and some other stuff, and I sit on some boards. And so, with that, let's let's get into the meat of this thing. Um, when Chris was talking about it, he said, "Let's we want to talk about from inspiration to application." So, inspirationally, what do you want to do? It's 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 a fundamental question. How many people in the room are current business owners? Oh, yeah. So everybody. Okay. So how many people are ten years or more? Okay. Any newbies like just long? <laughs> I feel like it too heavy. I keep going up. <laughs> Back down. Yeah. So okay. Warren was new. Okay. Um, Cynthia, just a newbie. Okay. All right. Somebody give me something that they're working on. Because this is a room full of entrepreneurs. I know somebody's got something on the whiteboard at the house that they're trying to flesh out. A software application. Software application. Anybody else? Online class. Online class. To go green. Go green. green. Go green gently. Gently. Green gently. Yes. Anybody else? <clears throat> okay. Nobody else. All right. When you, when you, there's some ways to figure out what you want to do, even if you don't have anything. It, it, and, and <clears throat> I knew with talking to Chris, this was kind of going to be weird because I'm talking to business owners about having inspiration. Well, if you're a business owner, you you probably applied your as your inspiration, so you're there. So this is going to be a little weird, but we're we're going to work through this and we're going to have some fun doing it. But and you can apply these things to your next deals because I'm sure you guys will have multiple businesses like most of the crazy entrepreneurs do. Finding your inner freak. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? <laughs> does that sound crazy? Okay, you can admit it does. This find, uh, uh, some people are freaks normally. And she points to this she's like the one next to me. She put her hand up first. <laughs> Okay, this finding your freak, and, I, and I'll tell you what, what, I got this from somebody else. And find the thing that makes you crazy. Like when other people think about it, what is one of the things that you are freakishly crazy about? Me? It, it, it doesn't matter because you have expertise in that thing that makes you a freak. I like clothes. I've always liked clothes. I'm freakishly crazy about men's shoes. I have been since I was in the ninth grade when I had to go to church and my mom said, go to the store. And she gave me her credit card. And I went to the store and she said, go buy a pair of shoes. Well, <laughs> I went to the store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She gave me her credit card and she said, go to the store, go to the mall, buy a pair of shoes. So I go in the store and I was like, ooh, I like those. Well, <coughs> I got screamed at later about this. <laughs> All right, it was a 300 pair, it was a $300 pair of oh. shoes. A pair of Bostonians. Now, yeah, yeah, that's why she went off on me like later. <laughs> uh, so those shoes felt so good. And the guy, it was an older guy, and he showed me how to take care of them. I just got rid of those shoes because they were a size seven and a half, and I moved. I mean, but but they were so nice. They were so nice. They were so. I mean, I was in love with these shoes. So from then on, I kind of had this love for like high price shoes. 
Yours may be person. Yours may be technology. Yours may be jewelry. I, I don't know. But there is something. Yours, there's something that makes you crazy. So what I did was I started blogging about high-end men's shoes. And I did that for a couple of years. And that blog evolved into a men's cufflink store. And that online, in that cufflink store, I wasn't selling anything, so I shut it down. And I reopened the Aristocrat store, which is shirts, shoes, whole nine yards. But anyway, so, so your inner freak is beneficial. There is that thing because it, it, it gives you a specialized knowledge that people don't have. Uh, what groups do you belong to? Which is another way to drill down into who you are. Let's, you, I'm going to pick on you. Is okay. That, okay. Yeah. All right. Here we go. <laughs> when I say groups, you are female. What race are you? I'm brown. You're brown. That's what my American baby says. I'm brown. <laughs> <laughs> You're brown. Okay. I don't have a whiteboard, so I would whiteboard this. You're brown. You're a lady. Are you married? Single. 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 Brown. Lady. What else? Are you a sister? I do have a sister. Okay. You got a brother? C. Okay. You're a sibling. You're a daughter. All right, uh, give me some, give me some other groups you belong to, like church and stuff. I do a lot of volunteer work, uh, a lot of charities, especially charities that help animals. There's something out in national park. National park stuff. See, the list starts to build, starts to build. We start to build the list. Now, keep, give me something else. Big animal lover, love outdoor sports. Love outdoor sports, love animals. I only like cats, so I really care about much of anything else. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Now, see, there's something in that list that you have specialized knowledge about. Smoky Mountain stuff, the animal stuff. There may be opportunity to drill down into that and pull out another opportunity. Maybe to educate people on a business educating people on, you know, the Appalachian Trails. I don't know. I'm just feeling, but, you know, I'm bracing you. But finding what groups you belong to. There's a, some great business assessment questions out there, like strengths, weaknesses. Um, actually, if you go to, to DamonRoss.com, there's a business assessment on there that's free. You can download it. Um, but it kind of drills down into that stuff and just says, okay, what am I good at? Uh, strengths, weaknesses. What do other people say I'm good at? What do other people say my weaknesses are? Um, so you can drill down and, and find some things that work. Let's go to the next one. All right. Market research. Gathering information. <coughs> I'm going to give you, yes, sir, if you will pass these out. All right. <clears throat> if they, if, if someone were to say, "What is the one thing that will make you successful in business?" I honestly don't believe that there's this one thing. That's kind of like saying to somebody, "There's a perfect. If, if we need more, there's more." Are we? No, we're good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if, if someone were to say, what's the perfect SAT score that will get me into college? There is no perfect SAT score. It's it's a culmination of things. It's be more. Um, there's a culmination of things. So, but if I had to say, what was the number one thing that will get you off the ground best? The secret sauce, it's your research. It's the gathering information piece. It's the research piece. The research piece is going to give you so, you're going to be able to speak the language. If you research your market properly, you'll be able to speak the language of that market in such a way that they will love you. 
What do I mean by that? As Chris is a coach, a personal development person, you hear his language. His language is tailored in such a way that he talks about becoming a better person. Don't we all want to become a better person? Deep down, see, you see, deep down inside, we want to become a better person. Deep, he speaks that language, and so in that market research, this is a way to get there. There's product research websites, keyword research, and then I gave you a list of sentence stubs. Now, I believe in doing some work. So, pull up. If let's flip out of this okay. and and go online. Uh, and Google Quantcast, that very first website there. Or just pull up Quantcast. Yes, sir. What about research uh, tools for your customer and actually kind of determine that the, the market exists. Uh -huh. Does anyone find your customer? Like how many you know, demographic data, this men of this age or this race and whatever live in this community? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that is part of it. That is part. I mean, there is the data, I kind of break data down into the beginning data and then as you begin to flesh out the deal, just like you're saying. What is that? Now you can find that information in the demos, uh, in the demo stuff, in the market research stuff. Uh, you Bless know, you. your chambers. You know, we, you know, your chambers have that. Your, I'm uh, surprised about that. I called the chamber. Well, I emailed the chamber. Uh -huh. uh, Rhonda Rice. And talked to somebody else down there. And how quickly they got me on the Yeah. I mean, anything I wanted, I was like. Because we're doing the things with mechanics, and I said, I want to know how many mechanics are in Knoxville, um, how many of them have multiple phase commercial facility, and do between five hundred thousand and a million dollars a year in business. Yeah. So they sent me a list of that. There's an address of one of them. There's a free, there's a free list also with the uh, um, if you have a library card, Knox County Library has it. Um, I don't know about Oak Ridge, but Knox Knoxville Library, if you tab into the second tab. If you go into the second tab, there's this thing called research database in the library tab. In that research database, there's reference USA. In reference USA, you can drill that. I can tell you how many companies opened up last month in Knoxville. And it'll give you owner, square footage, uh, lady, man, um, everything. So, <laughs> reference USA with the library. But yeah, where, where you want to go here, buddy? Um, yep, yep, yep. Right there. Yep. Okay. There we go. Right here. Perfect. 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 Okay. This website. This website is disgusting. Put in Complex Magazine right here. Watch this. Complex Magazine. Complex Magazine. You'll like this. For the nerds in the room, you'll love this. Look at that. Complex Magazine. Their readership. Scroll, scroll down. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, scroll down a little bit. Scroll, scroll. Where's that? Wait a minute. Oh no! Oh, just take take out magazine. I'm sorry. Take out complex. magazine. Yes, yeah, just complex. Complex.com. Com. Yeah. Go search. Yeah, you have to. This is a this is a tool to search websites. Here's their readership, everyone. Here's their visitors. Scroll down. Scroll down. A little bit more. It's like they're sharing their Oh my! Look at that. Look at. Scroll down. Demos. They reach. Hold on. Uh, Here's their index of men and women, age break, 188. Here's the age breaks, no kids, your ethnicity break, your income of those people. You can take this tool and, they, and 
in Matrix, anybody you want to try to try to check out. Because you may want to see, like, if you find a company that you want to mirror, you can kind of jump in and see what they're doing, who they're reaching, and dig in to that, dig in that way, and kind of mirror yourself behind them like that. Um, slide down just a little bit. And they throw you some some comparative data on some guys who are just like them. So this website I like. I haven't used it in a while, so there may be some there may be some changes to it, but it's on that list. It's on that list, but there's there's a great way to do market research right there. Um, let's go. Like I know you were working on your Go Green stuff. Here's some you can find out your top green websites. Start seeing who they're touching. How many ladies should you be focusing on women? Should you be focusing on women 25 to 45? You know, age breakdowns, those sort of things. This is where this is the meat. This is the meat of it. You start getting into this kind of stuff. And you can get next to any consumer. You see, you guys know what I'm saying? This is the nerd stuff. This is behind the scenes nerd stuff. <laughs> this, is, this is how you get there. Um, um, go to, um, we're going to go to the Google Ad. How many people use the Google AdWords tool? <clears throat> All right, there you go. Um, well, uh, Google what? Um, there's a, you see it? Right here. Oh, here, so yeah. Whenever I'm fleshing out my ideas, and I've got like a book of ideas, and when I'm, no, it's not AdWords, I thought, yeah. Um, <laughs> when I'm fleshing out an idea, this is kind of where I go. I just, I'll pop around and just see if it's viable. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's stuff in my notebook is stupid, and I just scratch through it as I start to drill into it. Because it sounds good in my head, but then when I put it out, and I go, ooh, that's not that good. So, okay, all right. Uh, what is AdWords? I don't know what it is. Google AdWords tool. Uh, go into the start now. Um, I'm sorry. The AdWords tool is. You know the top box of well, not top box. You know all the ads that Google has on the sidebar on the top. You buy these AdWords. Well, you you can pay percentage cents for these words. Ladies dresses. If I'm a retailer, I can, you know, say, all right, drive people to me and I will pay every time they click a certain percentage. But what it uh, what I do? Did I mess something up? Um are they doing it that way now? Because I'm always in my Google. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, keep, yeah, keep, yeah. You, you want me to log keyword. in, or what do you want me to do? Uh -huh. go, go keyword. Uh, right here. Keyword tools. Make sure they're going to tools. Or you can just Google. Google Google keyword. Google the Google tool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's try that. Let's try that. Okay. No, like yeah, like go to Google. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, and then Google keywords. Keyword tool. Yeah, keyword. Keyword tool. Keyword tool. Yeah. I have a feeling theirs will be the first one. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that part. It's the first one. Here it is. What, it if, what are the odds? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. What if theirs didn't rank that high? <laughs> That would be money. Um, so, okay. Somebody give me a word that would be green? Go, uh, green. Green. Um, what? Green gently, right? Go green gently. Go type that in. Go green gently. No, no, no. no uh, space mount. Space mount. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Go green gently. This tells you a lot because would someone you want to find your service? 
Mm -hmm. Yep. I kind of use this to, so I can see how they're searching because go green gently may not make sense. Not saying that it doesn't, I'm just saying. As a keyword. As, 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 a, as a way to be searched. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Effortlessly? If you could spell that out, how do I go green? Yeah, so that's, yeah. Well, that's, where, that's where we get to. That's what this is for. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You put it in a place to start. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. It's got some responses on the bottom. Thirty-three. Here we go. Okay. Great. Yes, ma'am. Scroll up a bit. There's a box. Just a little bit further up that says, "Only show ideas that closely related." Okay. That's that's a way you can make the list shorter. Okay. See? Yeah. Pull it. Pull out for a second. Take okay. that off. OK. Now, here's the thing. I'm questionable about how we word the Go Green. I like Go Green gently. I think it's strong. I think there's some direction behind it. But how we get people to get there is going to be tricky. It's going to be real tricky because what are people really looking at? Green cleaners. What is our eyes to see? I mean, that's, this is on a competition level, so if we clicked into here, you'd see um, how many websites are have green cleaner in the name. Can I do it? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and just click up. Uh, yeah. So 100, 120 million websites. That's highly competitive. Highly competitive. So back, uh, go back to the tool. This is a tab, or you can exit out. Yeah. So, green maids. These, the traffic isn't that hot. Green household cleaners. All natural supplies. But you see, this will start to help you. Simple. Oh, aha. Uh -huh. Ah. Simple ways to go green. This is how people are searching now. Pull that up so people can go hide. Don't don't go into it. Oh, okay. I'll pull it up. I'll just pull that. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So simple ways to go green. Sorry, where were we? Simple right ways to go yeah. green. All right. Not very many people searching it that way. But that gives you a way to start driving traffic because you know it's 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 searched for that way. Um, so it, go on green ideas. Was it up? I don't have it scrolled up long. I didn't see what the competition was. Okay. Scroll. Uh, so going green ideas. ideas. Here we go. Going green ideas. You're looking for low and medium, then? Yeah. Yeah. Because what it means is you've got search traffic that you're not competition you've got. Yeah. There you go. So it's 20 million websites? Yeah. Website? Website? yeah. Website. Some stuff I don't, it, it, I mean, it, it just depends. I mean, really, it just, it depends on what you want. If you're using it to to know how to get, you know, how to grab people, then you know, here's some ways we're going to grab people by them searching in that way. And actually, we can go up and see an exact search match. Like, would, is anybody typing in go green gently that way exactly? Scroll up, up to exact match over here. All right. Take it off abroad. Take it off abroad. Yep. And go green. Um, Say it again. Yeah. Uh -huh. Nah. Did it, has it refreshed? I think it has. I don't think anybody searched for it that way. So, but the, my, my point to that is these are some tools. Another great tool to see what people are doing Amazon. You can go on Amazon and you can say top 100 
items purchased. And you can drill down into all of their categories once you do that. And you can see what people are actually buying. And it's a good barometer for what's going on too. So, um, can, I just, can I say something real yeah, quick? Yeah, yeah. Um, so this afternoon we're going to look at this video called uh, Starting With Why. And one of the things that Simon's going to challenge us to do is to think in terms of not doing business with people who need what you have, but rather doing business with people who believe what you believe. And look, that's a, that's a significant difference, right? Um, so if you, if you tie that to something like manufacturing, it may be a little more difficult if you're providing a you know, the screws that go inside of this tripod, that might be a little bit more difficult, but, but in general terms, if you ask yourself the question, what do I believe about what I'm doing? And how do I find people who believe that? How do I find people to believe what I believe? And I would think that screams to what I would just call the green movement, right? Because you've got, you've got a smattering of people who believe all different kinds of things about quote unquote the green movement, about the recycling, and about being environmentally conscious, and and you know, lowering your footprint, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that's a huge target, I would think. Massive target, if you can find a way to get those people to start looking for you who are looking for, who believe yeah. that you believe. Yeah. But this helps you to see how they're looking, how they're going online and looking. What, what are they actually going in online and searching for? So now I know that people are searching green cleaners. Right. Green cleaners better be on the website. People are searching <clears throat> eco-friendly cleaners. I better have that wording in there some way, somehow, to drive traffic. Right. Yes, sir. I, I would also say don't get discouraged by those low numbers over the side of those search results. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the 200 clients you need. Yeah, that is the opportunity. Yeah. I, I've got this. I've got this philosophy. I don't. It's Raise your hand if you like flowers. Wow. Leave your hand up. Leave your hand up if you like flowers. Raise your hand. Drop your hand if, if 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 I touch something that you don't want, just drop your hand. How many people like tulips? Tulips. Oh, we have good tulips. Okay. All right. Blue tulips. I only I'm a, I, I only want to talk to one, two, three people. I don't care because I know specifically those three people. Not him in the back because he didn't know. He just was like, "Whatever, man. You got some tulips." He was like, "What's the tulips?" <laughs> Those two people right there, I know that they're, they know what tulips are. I'm going at them. I'm going at them. Yeah, she got flowers. She got little barrels. I'm going after you. I don't care that I missed out on the rest of it. I'm going after you too. So, that, I don't care. <laughs> because I know I can sell to YouTube. Like, one of the things about Google is interesting why people will talk about, oh, well, I need to go after every people searching for for uh, Blu-ray TV. I mean Blu-ray players. I don't care about people searching Blu-ray players. Tell me the guy who said I want the Panasonic X4 1822S. The people who search for that, those are the ones you want to talk to because they specifically know what they want. They're searching for it and they're going to spend some money on it. So in your industry. There are specifics similar to that. Not the guy who says, man, I want coaching. <laughs> what does that mean? God, I know. I don't know what that means. I don't know. What kind of coaching are you looking for? Are you looking for leadership? Do you need to develop yourself as a leader? Do you need to develop yourself on the spiritual side? Because there's spiritual coaches. There's energy coaches. There's people who'll take you in the field right there and go meditate with you all day. <laughs> but I'm not. I don't care. I'm not going out there. We're not meditating. We're going to talk some business, and we're going to talk about how maybe your business may be screwing up your family life. But that's what we're going to talk about. You know, so drill down into your stuff. So, all right, let's flip back to the presentation.
See, this is how I like to work. Like, when my presence, I don't want them, So, that's me. All right, so flip to the next one, sorry. I have this thing called act. Leave it there. But you want the first line or not? Yes, just the first line. Because I already gave him a peek now, so it's too late. Yeah, no, no, no. We're perfect. We're perfect. Right. Act. Out of the bag. Act. Assessing. The, and, and act is all about the information. Now that we've got the information, once you've done the searches and you're playing around with your idea and you're fleshing it out, assess, assessing the information. Start to really take a hard look at the information. Does it make sense? Does your idea make sense? You know, I hear people, especially you, you, you see people do this in the restaurant business all the time. Um, I've got the most fantastic sweet potato recipe in the world. Everybody who comes to my house loves my sweet potato. Everybody wants eat sweet potatoes, lady. <laughs> Most people don't like sweet potato pie. Like, what makes you think that you're gonna open up a restaurant that's all about sweet potatoes? How many good cooks do you hear say, "I'm gonna open up a restaurant one day"? Mm. <laughs> a lot. Restaurants are horrible. Unless <laughs> you got money just to blow, just kill it, man. Restaurants are tough. But just because you have a good sweet potato recipe, it may not be real. And people may or you, if you want to do it, you may have to look at a seriously unique way of delivering that product to people. Um, one thing I do is, in my coaching, if somebody comes to me with an idea, I never tell them that they're wrong. I never say that it's bad. Because I, I have this fundamental belief that God gave it to you. God gave it to you, that idea to you, for a reason. Now, what you do with that idea, that's your business. Um, but he didn't give the idea to me. So I may not be able to look at it in a unique manner. I may only do, say you can deliver that business by the ways that I know how to deliver it. But you may, be, may have been given the dream on a unique way to deliver your services. Your tech company that does yes. low cost monthly services. I may have said, if you came to me and said, damn, this is what I want, man, I don't know how you're going to do that. It's hey, just, it's everybody just, said that. <laughs> it's, it's just real. I, and, and so you sat down and you said, how am I going to deliver this in a cost effective manner? How many team, I mean, how many, how many people, sir, are in that business with you? Or service. Uh, I have three employees. Okay. See, that people went, oh man, how are you? How are you doing it? Are you guys out all day? Or, he may have a low cost that says, all you entrepreneurs, you pay me once a month, and if you need me, I will come, or give me access on the back end to your servers and the rest. Well, and, yeah, exactly like that. Like whenever we first started, my idea, you know, I, I ran into because of a, a pain point, an opportunity. I had people calling me, the friends of mine in the church, in the community, saying, "Hey, can you come over? I'm getting a bottle of wine or a gift card." Come and fix this. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I've got three bottles of wine. Sitting there, I'm like, I'm done. But I thought, I started asking, "Why aren't you using somebody else? You know, why don't you use Geek Squad or Fire Dog or uh, you know any of these other companies around here?" They said because that would become a relationship. You know, and then we started getting new stuff. I said, how do you do it if you want to see all my IT contacts? It won't work. There's no way. It's got to be built out. It's got to be great right fits. That's the only model that works. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's the that's wrong the thing, thing to tell me. <laughs> 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 but, but the thing is that those people were not given that idea. So he was. He fixed it. He's got a business around it. Awareness of the marketplace, acknowledging really the truth. Because I think once you start to dig into the data, the data gives you the truth about your, your, your idea, about yourself. And it's OK if you start to drill down into something and realize, whoo, I don't know if I'm going to chase this cat. That's a good time to cut. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Once you realize that it doesn't flesh out, just walk away from it. I got a notebook full of stuff that I was like, man, are you stupid? No way. <laughs> no. So it's okay though. 
And you may be able to come back to it later. As I was telling Warren, Warren's a real estate guy. I had real estate when I was in when I was about his age, and, and I was stupid, and I did a lot of stupid things with that whole real estate business. I'm going to revisit that business later. I've got some ideas for later on, but I won't do it until a few years from now, some years from now, probably about five years from now. But I know what I did wrong, and I'm going to go back to it. But go to the next, please. Creating. <clears throat> Creating reports that, uh, I'm not saying you got to become some super nerd and create these long, drawn-out reports like college. <laughs> and this may be controversial, but I'm going to say it anyway. The reason why most, most people fail in business is because they attack business as though they are highly educated college people. The most uneducated people have success in business because they attack business in a simple format. Most of the things we learned in college are idiotic. <laughs> we learn to write reports analyzing a business to make a professor happy. That is not real. She likes flowers. I need to sell her flowers. I need to buy flowers at a cost that I can make money on. That's what needs to happen. I don't need to come up with some 15-page report about what flowers are blooming in November and the rest of that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I need to find a way to deliver her what she wants in an effective manner. Point blank. Plain so. I, uh, I, I wish I could find this. I wish I could find the quote. But about a year ago, Remember when Domino's went on this attack about how how their pizza tastes? Remember this? Now this, I mean, we're probably a year or so into this. Their CEO wrote this long, drawn out <laughs> cock and bull story about how bad, and the technical terms that he used were just crazy. I read it. And I was like, man, I don't even understand these words he used. <laughs> and all he had to say, our pizzas are bad. They taste bad. We're going to fix it. We're going to fix it, and you're going to like it. <laughs> That's it. Simple. And go on the offensive and make it happen, which they've done. You know, they. I mean, if you like Domino's, you like Domino's. We like, you know, the pizza thing is a whole tribal thing. I like Domino's. So, but I think you got to just, you know, be realistic about it. So, choosing to move forward or not, that's fine. Trusting yourself and taking action. Like he said, the information that everybody gave him was that it's not working. It's not going to work. You need Bill of Wilders. You've got to be this type of structure. You're going to need X, Y, Z. There's there's a there's a book called uh, um, Hundred Dollar Star. Is it my read? Go get it. It's a really good book because it statistically kind of breaks down startups. And if you could take an organization from it, 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 it showed how many organizations in the country were started for less than a hundred dollars and now make over fifty thousand dollars. And how many go up to a hundred thousand dollars? Not millions, but yeah, I think like fifty-six percent or so were started that way. And he breaks down moving quickly. One-page business plans. I'm from that school of moving quickly. I think if I get an idea, I will flesh it out as fast as possible, and then I will move forward or I will chunk it. I don't sit on things forever. So trusting the information and then taking action. You've got to be a decision maker. You've got to take action. If you are a leader, if you're a business owner, and you're afraid to make decisions, go get a job. <laughs> go get a job. Huh? <laughs> exactly. Go get a job. Because you've got to take action. You've got to be. Oh, what's your name? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. I didn't ignore those obstacles or that advice. 
I just put those obstacles in place and said, how do I knock them down? You know, how do I get around those obstacles? I understand what you're saying. You know, the break fix model works. The guys are being paid by the hour. You can afford to pay them this much in salary. Mm -hmm. um, you can't have that relationship with the customer. Travel's too expensive and all those things. So I laid them all out and said, how do I attack those? And part of our model is it's a neighborhood model. So it's a two-mile radius of a shop. Mm -hmm. There's enough households there to support that business, and that's you know, driving distance, very short, walking distance, where you free pick up delivery, work on a lot of things in the shop so that the customer has. Look at your most innovative company now. They're, they're, they're marketing totally differently. They're attacking. They're, they're, I think if, if nowadays you've got to look at how business is done in Flip it on his head and try to go at it differently. Um, oh goodness, I forgot the guy's first name. You guys are familiar with Sandler Institute? Yeah. Okay. If you, he wrote a book called How to Teach a Kid. You can't teach a kid how to ride a bike at a seminar. In that book, <laughs> it's really neat. He said he's he's kind of he was kind of one of the first guys to start selling information as a salesperson. And he did it in his garage with tapes. You, know, you probably don't know what a tape is. <laughs> <laughs> Google, Google tape. Google <laughs> Memorex. <laughs> Memorex. Memorex. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you got tape. Memorex, you had 16. I don't know. I just read about it. You, you just read just about, about it. it. You just read about it. <laughs> Heard this thing, mm -hmm. tape, audio. Oh, yeah. So he would record himself. <laughs> but he said something in his book that has stuck with me forever. He said he looked at what all the sales guys that he knew were doing, and he decided to do the opposite. And I was like, pretty interesting, because most sales guys, truth be told, don't do anything and don't make any money. I'm not saying anything. Y'all know. Y'all know what I mean. You got to get a cup of coffee. <laughs> then we got to check my emails. Now it's 11 o'clock. I can't go out now. It's 11 o'clock, man. People are at lunch. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to go to lunch. And I'll, I'll go out at 1. I'll get back to the shop. That's how around. You see the game. You know, game group. <laughs> now it's like 3. If people aren't in their office. They don't want to see a sales guy at 3 o'clock. But what did you sell today? So, anyway, <laughs> go on to the next one. I'm going to help. <laughs> but once. Um, I wanted this slide to kind of reflect when I when I saw this, I was like, that's how you feel most of the time. It is. <laughs> like, you feel lost, you feel confused, unsure, you feel like unclear, Weird. perplexed, disoriented, bewildered. That's how you felt when we were doing the little right. uh, thing, especially when he threw in the <laughs> find four new people. Yeah. Find four new people. And that's what business is, I think. It it's it's that. You can plan it, you can have it all perfect, and they will throw a month, the world, the universe, God, Buddha, whoever, will throw a monkey wrench in there and say, have at it, baby. Let's see what you got. <laughs> you know, and it's like, what? Why would this happen? You know, just the most idiotic things happen. Like, you can spend $8 million building this beautiful restaurant. And then the city will come in and tear up the road right in front of your restaurant, and now your clients can't get to the restaurant. Man, like, are you serious? What are you gonna do? Still gotta, still got to build. You still gotta do your deal. So, um, I think I, I've got a philosophy about business. Two philosophies I got is that one is kind of like hurdles. You got to see the hurdles, and you're always you're running. Then you got a hurdle. Bam. And you, you get a second or two to breathe once you're over that hurdle. But the next one's coming quickly, so you better get ready. And then you get a second or two to breathe. Then you got to jump over it again. You get a second or two, like, oh, okay. Whew. Thank you. Then next thing, bam, it's another one. It's always something. It's always something. And you go, Lord, listen, just, just, can we just chill out for a minute? Can we just, can we just stop? Just give me some, give me like a free road for just a few minutes. And then 
He goes, nah, he goes, new hurt, baby. And you gotta just deal with it, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think if we adopt the philosophy of a surfer, we can address business in a lot better manner. And what do I mean by a surfer? Surfers will get on that raft, I mean that uh, surfboard, they'll get in the water, and they don't try to influence the water anyway whatsoever. They function with what the water gives them. They have a plan for being on the water, but what the water does, they deal with it and they make it beautiful. Awesome. If you want to write me a check for that one, you can. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working on that one all night. I was like, water, surfboard. I got to see pause a little bit when I give it. So, <laughs> all right, next slide. Success and failure, it's coming. You're going to have some successes. You're going to have that first client. You're going to sell that first client. You're going to go, like, yeah, I'm on it. I got it. Then you may go through a drought. Or you may go, no, marketing sucks. Like, I can't even find people. I haven't sold anything in six months. Like, I set up, and I'd I like to talk about my own, like, failures. I don't care. All right, I set up a coupling store. Smart me. I was like, yeah, all right, we got it. Beautiful store, sell cufflinks. Nobody's buying them. <laughs> Let me tell you why nobody's buying them. Because Damon decides to sell cufflinks. The cheapest cufflink on my store was like $150. Wow. The most expensive one was $475. Like, no one was buying them, man. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, why aren't they buying the cufflinks? I buy them. Yes, we do. Some of us do. Some of us. But that's a good point. That's yeah, but you're, you're right. You're right. That whole casual deal has screwed up the world <laughs> <laughs> and messed up my business. No, I'm just. But like, but I swear to you, I was six months in, and I was like, man, I'm not sold one yet. I, I gave some away to some nonprofits and stuff. I was like, all right, I'll give some away. Another drum, Trevor. Yeah. Yeah, no. So failure, big failure, big failure. I was telling him uh, I, I bought a house once, sight unseen, in the real estate market, and and I bought it because I I was just kind of buying and holding properties that were renting. I was renting them, and this one had a tenant in it, and I was like, oh, it's got a tenant in it, positive cash flow. I'm good. Yeah, I'll buy it. So I go introduce myself to the lady, and. And I go in the house, and the ceiling, there's this crack all the way around the house. <laughs> the ceiling was like almost not on the house anymore. I mean, it was, and I was like, oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and then she started telling me about all the stuff that was wrong, and we started going in rooms, and I was like, oh, man, man, man. Woo, yeah, yeah, man, yeah. yeah we make stupid decisions. We make stupid decisions. Would anyone like to share one of their stupid decisions? No one? Go ahead. I'll share a stupid decision. <laughs> when I started Green Village Green, I'm an artist. I'm an artist. I don't know anything about tech. So I didn't know how to begin to do the website. So I found a company that somebody recommended that built a through library. And it was the right model. It's true, but it's huge. But they didn't allow it to be updated. And I had to just dump the whole thing and start over it. That was stupid. And I just didn't know how to do my research for that. It was the university that was. <laughs> that wasn't a stupid decision, actually. That's just that's just web guy. Any web people in here? Don't, don't. I, I figured you would say that, but I, I, I kind of was looking at it. I didn't want to. Web guys are like crazy. So. I'm not a web designer, though. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. When I started like, my business, uh, my engineering, I do industrial automation, and didn't know anything about marketing, sales, anything. All I know how to do is program PLCs and operator interfaces and drives for manufacturing. And I get a call from the Yellow Pages guy saying, man, you need an ad in the Yellow Pages. Everybody's got an ad in the Yellow Pages. Every business has an ad in the Yellow Pages. 
All right. <laughs> <laughs> Time now is fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You're good. You got to look. You got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Success. 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 Right, teach them leadership development, go through their culture, help them achieve their goals. That, that's the idea, and that's still part of what we do. But somebody came up to me and said, "Chris, I got a small business. I, I got two or three employees, four people. I don't have 16 for a class." And I'm thinking, "What a dope!" I mean, I never, I never even began to think of that. And so I thought, "Well, what if I just put together change phase one of the experience just a little bit and invite multiple companies to come in instead of just mm -hmm. one?" We sold classes every month the last quarter of the year. As opposed to the first nine months, the year we couldn't do that. Yeah. There you go. So yeah. All right, bring this up. All right, moving on. Keep going. All right. Um, now we've talked about market research, making a decision. Now you've got to come up with the organization, and here's where we get into the LLCs. So, <clears throat> you know, the advantage of sole proprietorship, that whole stuff. And in here, go ahead and reach out to an attorney. Reach out to one. Find one. Have the conversation with them. the the conversation that you have with the tax professional is totally going to be is going to be totally different than the conversation with the attorney. I don't know why they can never be on the same page, but they look at it two totally different ways. It is what it is, but you got to figure out what structure works best for you here, and and, and you know move forward. So. And if anybody needs that, you okay? We have a great one, Dave Morehouse. Uh, he is fantastic. Great, great guy. And most of them will tell you, I'd say, you know, tell them what you want to do in the long term. You know, because if it's, you want to build multiple companies and have them under shell, I mean, not a shell, but under an umbrella, <laughs> then, yes, sir. They also, the chamber has a small business center inside of it that has yep. also classes on taxes and LLCs and all the different kind of uh, ways to do some yep. business organization. Yep. Um, <clears throat> You, you're going to have to figure out if you, you want to have a home base operation, a franchise, etc. Um, I've got a franchise. I, I, the cleaning business was foreign to me. I kind of partnered with somebody in another cleaning business and realized that I needed to get out of bed with them as quickly as possible. But um, dissolving that relationship, I still knew nothing about cleaning, but I like the numbers around cleaning. I like the numbers around um, <clears throat> The commercial cleaning world. If I gave you guys some numbers, you would freak out about how much people pay to have buildings clean. Um, I'm talking about a quarter million dollars a month, and that's locally. I ain't telling you who they are. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but so for me, a franchise operation in the cleaning world was better because they taught me chemicals, they taught me the basics for square footages and blah 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 and all that stuff. So. Franchises can be great if you need that information. You know, if you need it, <clears throat> there's coaching operations that are franchise, but you may not need a franchise. So you, you're just gonna have to weigh it out. I believe in the home-based business operation. I believe in being as lean as possible nowadays. I mean, there's technology so beautiful that you can have a full, humongous organization out of your house. You know, you can get Evernote. And there's people running whole companies off of Evernote. It's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, just the software. Software is just so. It's. I remember I was looking for some CRM software about five, six years ago, and it would cost five, six hundred dollars. You know, implement some stuff. I mean, you can get that for fifty dollars a month now, or fifty dollars a year. It's just crazy. It's crazy. So. Um, Accounting and cash flow. 
it, you've got to have a base in this. It, if you don't begin to learn what your credits and your debits and your your cash flow is, your cash is going to flow out the door. Point blank, plain simple. I'm not saying become an accountant, but learn the basics on what it takes to run your shop. You got to know what it takes to run your shop. So, e-commerce. You've got to. I, I think today you've got to add an e-commerce component to what you do. Um, depends. I mean, real estate you can't you can't have people buy stuff online. But I think you, if if you're in that type of situation, you've got to add that in. Um, E-commerce. You know, you can add a whole. I mean, like Chris being a coach can add an e-commerce piece where he's selling material or he's selling speeches. I mean, uh, presentations. You know, so. Look at those opportunities. There may be some ways that you can add income in. Um, marketing. You've got to attack marketing nowadays totally different than you've ever attacked it before. I can't tell you. You know what I do? I was thinking about the yellow pages. You think about the yellow pages. And I was trying to think of the last time I used the yellow page. I can't remember the last time I used the yellow page except for to hold the door open when I was. Like moving some stuff. They put it on my front porch. And I was mad because they had put it on my front porch. Matter of fact, they put four on my front porch. And I was like, why do I have four of these stupid things when I don't even use them? Come on. Pull out the phone and we go, I need a tech company. You know, we don't we don't use. We don't use it. Um, so a tech marketing totally different. Whether it's canvassing, if you're small. Maybe do some partnership, and and I heard I was listening to a company talk about marketing, and it was unique, and they were talking about canvassing. Okay, you know the company Shop a Lot over in Turkey Creek. I think they're out of Nashville. Well, one of the things that they did to start off was to canvass by actually walking around to companies, giving them chocolate, and saying hi. I'm here in the marketplace. Here you go. Just wanted to introduce myself. Now, you can take that marketing piece and partner it with like your tech guys who are canvassing in the two mile radius. You can go your you you can go to Chocolade, uh, Chris, some other surrounding companies that you have a relationship with. Put together a little package and say, "Hey, I'm a group of business owners. We just want to introduce ourselves, and there, all four of you guys are getting your face in the place. Where one of you is just doing the canvassing, but if you put together a small business pack, you know, all four names are out there. Maybe you're taking some, they're taking some, they're taking some, they're taking some, and you're canvassing all, all around. So." There's some different ways to market. It's like how drug reps work. Drug money. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. There you go. Um, I mean, I, I say take a look at it. Marketing is <laughs> like. At least food will get you in the door. <laughs> yeah, well. Especially yeah. chocolate. Yeah, he's going to get you in my door. <laughs> food. I mean, you know, canvassing, online, you know, Facebook, you've got. Now let me talk about social media for a second, because I don't believe that you guys spend eight thousand hours a day on social media making posts that are irrelevant that no one's going to see. You better be strategic when you're going in that social media realm. Social media is like a chainsaw. Chainsaws are good if you know how to use them and cut a tree down. If you don't know how to use them, don't even get it. Learn about it first, or else you will be wasting your time. Because the truth is, is that no one cares about you having coffee at Starbucks. No one cares. And if you put that on there, you think somebody cares? <laughs> she knows what I'm saying because she's like, yes, amen. So no one cares. And be very, very strategic about your social media. Since it, and, and my, the tech guy can attest to this. Since it ranks so high. Be very, very specific about how you name your social media. 
your LinkedIn, your Facebook, your Twitter, your fan page. If you, just to use me as an example, everything I do is Damon Ross. The aristocratic store is the aristocratic store, but it still is attached to kind of Damon Ross. Like, so if you Google me, the first four things, five things will come up are my Twitter, my LinkedIn, my Facebook, and then some articles on me. And then my criminal, my <laughs> jail time <laughs> the rest of that. Hey, that's going to be for real. I pushed it down by implementing the social media strategy. Now, I actually Googled myself, and there was a dude in jail named Dan. Like, and it kicked, and I was like, what? <laughs> And uh, yeah, it was this white dude with biker tats and all. So, <laughs> not me. Uh, so go to the next. Um, here's my contact information. I'm always open to talk. Um, and I love business. I just love it. I mean, so I'll talk with anybody, and I'll talk for hours, which is not a good thing. But I will talk. I, I, I love. I love bouncing ideas, talking to each other. So. Um, I know I'm getting ready to wrap up. So, does anybody have anything that they want to bring up, question, talk about? I've got a couple minutes left. So, yes, ma'am. You said you had a notebook with ideas, business ideas. Mm -hmm. And you start doing research to decide whether you're going to flush them out and do them. How do you decide to, that's not what I need? Because in your head, it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. At what point do you get to what this is, what what information comes to you? What it makes you say, oh, yeah. you said it. I'm going to chase that cat. It, it, as I start digging in, when it's not for me, when it's not adding up, right? Like if I can't find, if I can't find enough people, if if there's going to be just a, if it's going to be too hard to do it to go after it. I'll give you an example of one I walked away from. Um, because I just couldn't wrap my head around how to do it. Um, but I liked the idea, but I just couldn't get there. I couldn't figure out in a business structure how to get there. I I don't drive a fancy car. I'm, I'm a basic guy when it comes to cars. I like clothes, but I don't care for cars. But I like nice cars. I like beautiful cars. I just don't own one. Just, I don't really care. It's just, it's, Weird. No, so, but I was thinking, wow, it would be nice that if this guy said, I want a blue Maserati, 2012 Maserati, I'd go find that Maserati for him. And he pays me a commission to go find that Maserati for him. If he's buying a Maserati, he's so busy that he's probably got the disposable income to pay me to go do it. Exactly. So I'm going to search and go find this Maserati. I couldn't come up with a structure. I don't have the contacts in the high-end car world. I just couldn't get there. You, you see what I mean? Like, I couldn't get there. I, yeah. huh? You don't have the passion. I didn't have There you go. Point blank. I didn't have the passion. As I I like it. But as I started to really drill into it, I don't have a passion for it, and I couldn't see it, so. <laughs> that's probably that's really about it. That's such a great point, because you, you know what he's passionate about. You can see it when he took He's passionate about creating entrepreneurs, right? Which is why he's successful at doing what he does. That, that's a great point. Yeah. That's so coaching, point. I like it. So, I mean, it just supports it. So, anyway, all right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Chris got this certificate paid. Thank you for being here today. We really appreciate it. Buddy. Thanks, thanks, thanks. I'm going to stay and hang out with y'all. All right. If that's okay with everybody. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. 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 The hour, all right? Now look, this is very important, all right? The most important part of workshops like this is that you're not just entertaining. It's very entertaining. Game's a good guy, brings out a lot of good stuff. What's important is that you take something from that and you make it personal, okay? So any number of things, I took a bunch of notes, any number of things that he said 
we're going to work on this for about 15 or 20 minutes or so. Yourself and your and the people at your table talk about the takeaways and talk about what specifically you're going to do with that and what commitment you're going to make to do. Okay? So take a break and we'll reconvene in just a few minutes. Trying to find another word to describe it. You know what? We Thank <laughs> you. 
I said, I don't give my wife. So, I disagree with me. 
All right, let's go ahead and uh, try to find a seat again so we can reattack. Thank you, thank you, Thank you, Okay, so uh, beating a dead horse, forgive me, but it's important. So let's say it again, right? Today's about you. Today's about learning from guys like Damon and, and Jonathan this afternoon and some other things we're going to be doing. But it doesn't take effect unless you are purposeful. Unless you are deliberate, right? So, for example, the coaching industry, the development industry, that thing is a jillion dollar industry, and 90% of the people that are out there they get you really excited, and then you walk the door and you're excited, and nothing happens. And that's not going to be the day. Okay? When you walk out of here, I want you to have a plan. I want you to say, not only am I excited, it was a great day, it was worth my time, but here are the two or three things that I'm going to commit to doing over the next week, month, six months, whatever it's going to be. So it starts right here and right now. What I want you to do is I want you to think about some of the key concepts that Damon talked about. And in your group, or if you want to join up with another group, that's fine too. Um, but I want you to share with one another some of your key takeaways. There's two reasons for that. One, it reinforces your takeaway. And the second is somebody at your table undoubtedly didn't get that takeaway. Didn't, didn't see it from your perspective, didn't think about it from your perspective. And so if you've got at least four people at each one of your tables, you've got four different perspectives, all right? And then what I want you to do is, as people are talking, I want you to be making notes to yourself on some key ideas of things that you would like to pursue. This afternoon, we're going to take about 45 minutes or so of dedicated time to developing an action plan, right? And it's going to be a result of what Damon shared with you, your takeaways, what Jonathan shared with you, and then the video that we're going to show this afternoon. Okay? So we got, we'll just go ahead and work until the caterer comes. Uh, Carrie said we'll be here about 11.15, so... We've got about 15 or 20 minutes. And I'll wander around, so if you have questions, please ask, okay? Yeah, my table's already done, Chris. We <laughs> worked around really quick. Oh, really cool. <laughs> I learned a lot. What I took away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, but the kind of 
Okay, we're gonna we're gonna be ready to eat. Um, but I'm gonna encourage you over lunchtime to continue the process. Okay, continue talking if you wanna move tables and meet with some new people, but continue to network and continue to talk about uh, lunch.
that is 80 pounds or 90 pounds of that. So this is a bigger road. This, yeah, but like this is smaller. It's like an alcohol type So I was like, I'm going to have to go for that. This is the second time I got it. The first time I got it. It's like an alcohol. Literally.
She actually was teaching, yeah, teaching. Uh, uh, we had already got a result of the
Well, I'm just trying to figure out what I can, which one I can unplug without keeping you up. Um, let's see. I just need to switch one of them. If I can switch that one or this one. Uh, switch this one. Sure. Okay. Whoops. Don't switch that one. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's just the, uh, that's your computer, actually. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's what, you know, we 
consultants that were there. The average grade two and the descent was 17 miles per hour. Yes, people can understand vast amounts of complicated information like features and benefits and facts and figures. It just doesn't drive behavior. When we communicate from the inside out, we're talking directly to the part of the brain that controls behavior, and then we allow. Perfect. That's plenty of options. I put it back in. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And then I'm going to um, So then the question is, can I publish a few protests? Yes. 
Yeah. All right. Perfect. Yeah. Great. All right. Now we can put it. Now we can put it back on there. Put it back on there. Everybody? Yeah, so yeah, so you said there's you, you think there's some standalone joints that I can look at. Yeah, I would, I would use Comcast as a scheme just because their internet's going to be faster than the tech for home use. The price would be fine. I think I think we tried them, and I think the work. I think what we got was well, if you, if you take it off of the bundle, it's going to be uh, it's going to be more expensive. Oh, well, it's more expensive. Not more expensive. So they absolutely will sell you a standalone internet. I know so it's well, we're not happy with the TV. Why we He's trying to do everything over the same copper lines they laid down 75 years ago. Yeah, they'll update things as they go. Yeah, you think about the reliability of that network. What's their hesitancy to upgrade? Is just capital? Yeah, they, they just don't. I mean, they're upgrading for other things, but they'll probably never upgrade as well. I mean, they've developed new technologies. But so they'll push the content but at the same time, there's nothing like getting 
cable, which is a better medium. The Lugo essentially is fiber optics, which is the best medium currently available. Yeah, so it's an easy thing. It's a little phone line. No matter what you put on two different ends to try to get the speed going, the right? DSL works. DSL is amazing. But, you know, there's nothing like a fiber that's just a match has uh, 2,000 pounds of power. What is the time? So, I mean, that's what you're saying. I'm not an expert. That's me. Thank you. You know, just like you can't get charter in your house, you have to use charter. Um, because Comcast is that area. Right. In the U.S., they came in and probably used a regular. But they had a so, uh, yeah. well, but I guess not for that. It's not exactly. It's not exactly the free market economy. <laughs> right. All right. Just so you know, we're going to begin in about ten minutes. So you got to plan for potty. Party, or as I would say, potty. You, um, Jessica, you have a power strip over here if you need it. Underneath your, underneath the stand. He's been hiding. Matter of fact, I think I heard him say Discipline myself pretty much. Oh, right. I'll be <laughs> to increase my productivity. <laughs> oh. So you've been pretty busy lately. I have been. Very blessed. And I, I got. Um, Sounds like the whole small business thing worked out. Well, having to have multiple companies as an add on, I mean, probably not. I, um, I teach people how to make good choices based on whether Otherwise, I think it was a walk and tip the guy that's a good guy. So, to have right now is not that anybody does that, of course. <laughs> but um, I'm not doing enough. I need to be doing. I need a marketing person. Uh, more than likely, I'm going to need some, some technology to help at some point uh, sooner than later. I don't have a good enough. I really don't want Motivate to be much larger than this. Right. I'm not looking at, at one point I was looking at Motivate becoming the next Stephen Covey. And if and if it grows necessarily and I don't have any way of stopping it, there's more than enough to stop it. Friends of mine, DC, family and friends in New England. But, um, and you're going to talk about the start with the start with why video. The start with why video, when I watch, I watch it literally three times. There was a point where I was watching it every time. No, I think it's really good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And, and what he says there is just absolutely true. If it's, if it's not a vocation, money is a result. You don't give it to the business to spend money. It's a result. 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 It's
Because I need, uh, I need some. <coughs> I will come together. Right now, my biggest need is I need to shed GoToMeeting and I need to rely on Google Plus Hangout. You can do that. And for some reason, I just can't seem to get that thing to respond well enough. So. Yeah, I just did a training for the one of Carrie's companies, Carrie's clients. Oh, really? Okay. On how they can use Google Plus and Google Plus Hangout. Yeah, we'll definitely, uh, let's definitely talk about that. All right, we're good. Okay, we ready? To yeah, we're ready. If I don't trip, we're ready. Yeah. Everything's set up. Okay, last call for a potty break. Another roll. Spinach sandwich. We're going to begin in two minutes. Or maybe three. <laughs> No, that's fine. You're perfect. Fine. You go. I appreciate you. I haven't heard back. Joe says you have a lot of I'm not going to change the market. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get started. Don't make me come back, and I will come if I need to come back. <laughs> no, tech geeks, not for Carlos, because I don't know him well enough. But watch out! Yeah, get you out of here by get you out of here by three. 
And sometimes I tell Jonathan to speak for 10 minutes, he goes for an hour and a half. So. <laughs> okay, so um, starting to talk about takeaways, starting to talk about things that uh, maybe some seeds that have been planted or reinforced today. And we're going to continue with that theme this afternoon. Uh, as I said to you earlier, I asked Damon to join us because for me, you know, when I first met him, he was a guy that I connected with really, with really well. He was a guy I just wanted to hang out and, and be more like, to be quite honest. We learn, learn from him and try to, try to get some of the questions answered. Um, Jonathan and I have met through a, a number of different networks. Uh, the biggest thing we have in common is we're both uh, former GIs. Uh, he was a, or a Navy guy. And, uh, and I was in the Air Force, so he was on ships and I was on planes. But other than that, we had a whole lot in common. Um, Jonathan, you may say a little bit more about this when he talks to you, but he worked with the Blue Angels uh, for quite some time. He's got a pedigree with the military. Um, but what Jonathan really brings to the table is passion. You saw the passion in Dana this morning from uh, for entrepreneurialism. Jonathan had an idea several years back. He saw a need. He saw something that needed to happen within the Knoxville community, the greater Knoxville community, and now really within the greater East Tennessee community. He made it happen. Right? That's the simplest way I can say that. There were some challenges. Uh, he had to recruit good people. He had to find a good support network. He had to get the word out. He had to figure out the best way to get this idea that he had together. All right? The reward for his idea now is the, ten the Tennessee Veterans Business Association is very well known not only in the Knoxville and the greater Knoxville area, but all around the East Tennessee area, people looking um, to model what Jonathan has done. He has brought together politicians. He's brought together business leaders. He's brought together veteran business owners who have a stake in this local community. Now, as a sidetrack, I will tell you that typically when somebody retires or leaves the military, right, if they're on active duty, they end up, quote, unquote, going back home. They don't typically stay where they were last stationed. Some people do, most people go back to where they were. All right? What Jonathan brings very unique to the table is he targets those people in this community who believe in the community, who want to do business in the community, and who want to do business with other business people within the community. His story is very fascinating. Um, Jonathan brings a wealth of experience and knowledge, and I think he will be a great add-on to where Damon started us on the path this morning with this idea of bringing an inspiration or an idea to application. So please help me welcome Jonathan Williams. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Leo, for putting this on. Thank you guys very much. David, thank you for this morning. Even though I couldn't hear it, I had to uh, take off for a few minutes. I apologize for that, but I'm sure it was fantastic. Um, I'll echo what Chris said. Uh, Damon is a great entrepreneur. Um, just listening to him talk a little while ago about all the things he's involved with in this community is, is pretty inspiring and it's also pretty overwhelming. I don't know when he sleeps. I don't know, but uh, it's, uh, it's pretty good. Um, to echo again what Chris said, uh, Chris and I met about almost three years ago, mm -hmm. I guess, through uh, the military associations that we have. And Chris uh, retired from the Air Force and, and jumped right into this business community as well. And speaking as a veteran and as a business owner now, somebody that transitioned from the military, it's not an easy transition to make from. The military background that you're in, this bubble, this very controlled world, and then jump into a civilian community with an idea that says, I'm going to go start a business from nothing, basically, and be able to do that as seamlessly as Chris did is, is a testament to him and his abilities and his passion, for that matter. Um, Chris is very passionate about what he does, and uh, he's a very, very good person at what he does, and it's uh, a privilege to know him and a privilege to be around him. I thank you very much. Um, what Chris has asked me to talk about is passion. How do you take what you're passionate about and put that into action? And it sounds really easy, doesn't it? It sounds perfectly simple to do. I'm very passionate about green energy. I want to make Knoxville green. Well, how do I do that? Man, that's not easy, is it? It's not easy at all. So how do you take what I'm passionate about and be able to put that into play to not only start a business, but hopefully make money and hopefully go out and make this community a better place to be. Um, let's face it, as entrepreneurs, you know, a lot of times we do work for free. A lot of times we do. Um, very philanthropic, very involved in the community. We have to work for free. But at the end of the day, we also have to make money. I mean, we are free market capitalists. Let's just be honest. It's what we do. We try to make money. So to be able to take your passion and make money off of it is a very special thing. 
very, very few people can do. It's not an easy thing to do. I don't know, David, how much you talked about this, but entrepreneurship is not for everybody. It's simply not. So you have to be able to take what you're passionate about and get other people to buy into it and therefore be able to go support yourself and your family. And that's not easy. It's not easy at all. Um, this presentation is going to be a little bit different. I'm not going to do a slideshow and all that stuff. I'm just going to talk and get a little more interactive with you guys here in a second. But a little bit about me. Um, I joined the Navy in 1990 right out of high school. Um, I grew up in Edenton, Georgia. Comes to find out, David also knows where Edenton is. A uh, very small town in Georgia, rural town. Wasn't a whole lot there. Uh, I graduated high school on a Friday. I left for the Navy on a Tuesday. Um, it was time for me to go, so I left. Um, haven't really looked back since. Um, joined the Navy. I spent 10 years in the Navy. I was actually an aviation storekeeper, so I might have worked around airplanes probably just as much as you did. <laughs> yeah. so, um, I worked around airplanes my whole entire 10-year career. Um, I worked around helicopters for two years, F-14s for two years. I deployed on Abraham Lincoln um, for Western Pacific deployment right after Desert Storm was ending. Um, moved up through the ranks a little bit there. Went to uh, VQ-3 Squadron, which is a Boeing 707 aircraft, same as the KC-135, actually. And you guys ever seen the movie Crips Attire, the Navy movie with submarines and how they communicate? That, that movie is actually very true. Um, submarines get messages through the air. And the airplanes that I worked with for three years at Travis Air Force Base sent those messages to submarines. And that's actually the only way submarines communicate with the outside world is through those messages. Um, so that was a pretty important duty station there. And after that, I was humbled enough and, and honored enough to be selected to do uh, air shows with the Blue Angels and represent the Navy and Marine Corps to cities across the country. And that was uh, quite an honor to be able to do that um, as, a, as an enlisted service member in the United States Navy, uh, traveling around to different locations, Knoxville, Tennessee being one. Was, uh, it was quite an honor. It was quite a thrill. It was a lot of fun. That's actually how I ended up here in Knoxville. Um, I took a job at Denzel Manufacturing in Maryville because I met my future boss at the air show in Knoxville. That's actually how I ended up here. Um, we met at the Hilton by the airport. She said she was in logistics and supply chain management for a local manufacturing company. I said, I do logistics and supply chain management in the military. I'm looking to transition. This was in April. I moved to Knoxville in October. Didn't know anybody here. Um, I just decided this is where I wanted to be. And me and my daughter moved here. And Twelve years later, here we are. Um, my civilian career was going great. Um, I had taken what I learned in the military and turned it into a professional project management career. And that's actually where I kind of developed my passion. And then we'll talk more about this in a minute. But my passion is mostly project management, the, the journey, getting to a result, getting from one place to another place, and watching how it all unfolds and managing the change and, and being able to, to articulate that to other people is what I like to do. And that is what I'm passionate about. The end result of that might not necessarily be my passion, but what we do and how we get there is what I really like to do. And I garnered that skill in the military and transitioned it to a civilian career. So then 1990, 2009 comes around and I was I moved on from Denzel and I was working for a supply or a sign company in Cars, the Insight Group, as a project manager and we did sign conversions for banks and other industries. 2008 came along, obviously the economy went to hell, let's be honest, and then a lot of people got laid off and, and it was just a bad time at that company. Well, I survived all the way to the end of 2009. I got laid off the Tuesday before Thanksgiving is when they said it's time for you to go. So I left and I had already kind of had the idea to take the skills I learned in the military and the project management skills that I had to start a federal government contracting company. I went to Y-12 a couple of times to their veteran-owned conferences and all this other things. I kind of learned a little bit about how this stuff works. I knew how the government bought and sold material from my time in the military, so I was like, well, I could do this. I mean, I could really make this happen. Well, obviously, I wasn't going to quit a good job in 2009 and go start a federal government contracting company. So I got laid off, and it was like, well, what do I do now? And, and I remember vividly, inside groups and cars, I came down Hardin Valley Road, I got on the interstate, and I was going home. And I said, I'm not even going to touch my resume. I'm not even going to bother with it. I'm not even going to deal with it. I'm going to start a company that does federal government contracting as a project manager. That's what I'm going to do. I was dating a girl at the time. I, I called her and I said, hey, I just got laid off. 
She's like, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to start a business. And she said, so long. I'll see you later. That's what happened. So long. I'll see you later. All right. I'll see you later. So, wow. Got that going. Decided that's what I'm going to do. I went out, and my first thought was, what is my passion? And that's actually what, this is what I'm good at. So that's what I'm going to start my business as. I was not going to go start a business doing something that I was not good at. Because as an entrepreneur, at the end of the day, you, you, when you start off, you're selling yourself. You take a resume that you have that you would go to Joe Schmo, I'm looking for a job. You take that resume and you turn it into a capability statement. You turn it into a marketing pamphlet for a company. Well, when I started, my company was me. That was it. I took what I had done previously, reworded it, re-put it into a capability statement. I said, this is my company. Came up with a name. The name's changed two or three times. I won't get into all that. But now my company is Accord Federal Services, A-C-C-O-R-D. We've been in business almost three years. We do about a million dollars a year in revenue now. So the journey to get there, though, was I had to find out what I was good at. And I was really good at project management. So I had to take that and formulate a company around it. As Chris mentioned earlier, you got to get the stakeholders. you got to get the people around you that can help you do that. So that's what I did. Instantly, when I first got this thing started, was, gosh, how am I going to do this? Well, I know Oak Ridge is right down the road, so there's a lot of federal government contractors in Oak Ridge, and a lot of them are better known. So how come I just don't go call them and see if they can help me? So that's where the idea to form this nonprofit came from. Is I started looking for people to talk to. I couldn't find any. I could go on these websites and these databases and I could locate individual companies, but there was no group or organization that brought them all together. So I was sitting at the Knoxville Chamber, which I absolutely, I speak raves about the Knoxville Chamber. They have helped me tremendously. Um, Doug Mentor, their small business development guy, has helped me exponentially by bringing me mentor programs and all kinds of things that help me grow my business and the nonprofit. Well, I was sitting in his office one day and I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. And if any of you guys know Doug or don't know Doug, Doug is very real. And Doug is going to be like, what do you mean you don't know what you're going to do? You better figure it out right now. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, well, I'll figure it out. So I got this idea to take all these veteran business owners in this area and put them together in a group. And we'll call it something, you know, we're going to call it, we don't know what we're going to do. And Doug said, if you, if you do it, then I'll support as a chain. And I said, all right, fine. So I went back home. All these federal government databases, are, they're all listed in there, all the contact information there and all sorts of stuff. So I piled all these emails, and I sent out this email saying, hey, I got this idea. Let's do this business association. And then and I said, all right, well, if they answer back, then fine. If they don't, they don't. Well, all of a sudden, I start getting all these emails back. Hey, that's a great idea. I'll support it. What do you want me to do? All right, that was kind of easy. So <laughs> two weeks later, we had our first meeting as the Tennessee Veterans Business Association. This was in February 2010. Um, the idea started in around January or so, 2010. February, we had our very first meeting. Um, that meeting, you didn't come in. That's the first one. Yeah, Milton came. I met my business partner, Milton, who these guys served together in the Air Force. And so that meeting actually helped my business grow and, and helped me do a lot of different things. But once all that started coming together is, is really when my passion kind of took over. Because the idea started, and then it started gaining momentum. And then it started, you know, we had our first meeting. It was like, wow, all these people came. So this month we're on to something. So then I said, okay, we got to start getting a structure. So we put a board together. And then we said, well, what are we going to do? And how are we going to make this happen? So then we put together networking events every month. And then all these people started coming to these networking events. They started coming to these meetings, and they started helping get a, a foundation laid and everything else. And I, I look back now. Fondly in some ways, but in some ways it's like, how in the world do we do all this? Because we went from an idea in February of 2010 to where we are now as a certified 501c3 with the IRS. Um, all sorts of people that have come on board to do what we do. Um, we have met with a lot of people, and, and we have got a lot of people engaged in what we're doing. And it's not been easy, but by no stretch of the imagination has it been easy. Um, there's been a lot of challenges and a lot of, why am I doing this? A lot of those, a lot of those, 
Um, I don't make any money off the TVBA. I've been doing it for three years. Um, it's to the point now where I can pay some expenses, gas money, um, lunch, things like that, but I don't make a salary from it at all. Um, but once it got going, it, it, it took a life of its own to a point we can't stop now. I, I absolutely cannot stop this now, even if I try. Um, once we started in February, well, we went through that summer of, I don't know what to do. I really don't know what we're going to do to keep this thing going. It was falling apart. We had personality issues. We had board not getting along. We had people wanting to do things one way and, and couldn't get a consensus. And you know, I was trying to be the happy-go-lucky guy, saying, "All right, let's get input from other people," and it just wasn't working. So finally, we, we cut some people loose from the board, and we said, "Okay, this is what we're going to do. And this is what we're going to be." Well, then the idea came along to do this business-to-business -business expo thing. And when I ran this by my partner, Milton, the first time, he's like, dude, you are out of your mind if you think we're going to do this. And I was like, man, we got to try. Like, we, I don't know what else to do. This association, we're going to fail if we don't do something. So that's when the idea came. In August of 2010, we decided to do a business-to-business -business expo. We did the first one in January of 2011. We did it at Rothschild's Catering Convention Center over there. We had about 120 exhibitors and probably about 1,000 people came through. And it was really, really, really cool. And to the point, again, we struck something. Don't know what it is, but we touched something. And what it is that we touched is we took veteran business owners that we had brought together into a room to celebrate them. This is who they are. This is what they do. And then we brought in other businesses that want to do work with veteran companies. And then we brought in colleges and universities that want to help train veterans. We brought in veteran nonprofits that want to help veterans. And we brought in military units to come in and kind of show who they are and what they do. So you got all these people in the room. You got active duty military, you got business owners, you got colleges and universities, you got all this mixture of stuff. And we create this very high energy event. And it's it's really cool. Um, so so we did that in 2011. Um, at the same time we got all these people together, we said we're gonna invite the veteran community to come in for a I don't call it job fair because I think that's unfair, but it's a career opportunity expo, if you will. They can look for jobs, they can find education and career opportunities, business startup assistance, and just network with other veterans. So that's where we get a lot of our people because we invite the veteran community to come in. So you get all these people in this room, it's very high energy. Uh, we did an event in 2012, had about 150 exhibitors, about 2,000 people, and we're getting ready to do our third one in three weeks at the convention center. Um, about another 150 exhibitors, we fill that room up, and this year probably a couple thousand people as well. Um, we had buy-in from the city, both mayors, governor. Um, we, we were doing a keynote dinner. We're still going to do it. Chris is going to help me out here, but uh, Jim Haslam, founder of Pilot Corporation, is a veteran, so Pilot is better known, and he was going to come be our keynote speaker at our keynote dinner, and we've already sold about 300 tickets to this, and I found out last night he has to back out, and this is... Change, 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 right here, wow. change. I was not happy at all when I got that email and I bitched about it and I was like pouting to myself and I don't want to go through all this again. Then I backed up, I regrouped, I slept on it, and now I'm kind of excited. It's like, now who can we get? Now let's make it better. All right, Jim, you want to come? We'll make it better. So Chris is going to help me get some people and we're going to make it better. I and mean, that's all we can do. I mean, we certainly will not fail. That will not happen. We were, we we're going to have a dinner. I don't care if Chris has got to talk for two hours. Somebody's going to talk for two hours. <laughs> so we're going to do it. So Chris is going to help me out. And go down. So that's that's kind of what I've done and, and how we've done it. And June will be my third year anniversary of my company. I have great business partners that understand that we also have a nonprofit to run. And it takes a lot of my time. But they are great guys. They're Air Force guys. So we won't hold that against them. But they are fantastic people, and uh, it, it's really good. I mean, I'm having a lot of fun. Um, it is. I'm very passionate about what we do, but but again, I'm passionate about the outcome. I'm very passionate about this expo. Not only does it help a lot of people in this business community, but I'm, I like doing it. I like putting this stuff together. I kind of like the change. I bitch about it last night, but tonight or today, it's like, all right, let's go do it. And then you get the challenge back out of it. So now we're going to pull this off. So just because, and, and it's kind of a weird way to put this, because even I said you got to be passionate about what you do, but you might not necessarily have to be passionate about what it is you're doing at the moment. 
I'll speak for Damon here because I've heard him say it a couple of times. I know, Damon, you don't like clean toilet paper. You are not passionate about the brush and toilet paper. But you are passionate about your company and your business and your customers and your brand and all that stuff. And you will clean the toilet. And you will clean the toilet. But that don't mean I'm passionate about why I'm in there cleaning the toilet. So that's part of the passion that, that, that gets kind of lost sometimes is you got to take what it is that I'd like to do and be able to go execute it, but at the same time, you got to look at it in, in the big picture kind of thing. I don't like having to, I run a nonprofit. I hate asking people for money. I don't like it. It's so far out of my comfort zone, I just don't like doing it. But I have to. That's the only way we manage. So what I've done is say, okay, we're going to give you all of this. In return, I, I want some money. So it's it's not been easy. That's that's my comfort zone that I had to really get out of is going to ask people for money. Um, so, what do you guys like define passion? What, what would your passion be? What is it that you do? And how would you define what your passion is? I love people. I deal with people on a face-to-face -face basis. Animals, outdoors. I like I like a simple life. I'm from the Mickey Mouse farm, right there. Okay, All right. very cool. So, how do you take that passion then and turn it into a business? I mean, I'm a sales rep. Your sales rep. Uh, so I do. I own my own business. Okay. Run from business to business all day long. What do you say? What do you, what do you say? Jewelry, puppet dog stuff, just general design. Okay. So now we are different. My my what I sell is a service. I sell facility management work to the government. So it's a little bit different. They come, the government comes to me saying we need this done at a certain building, and I submit a bid to it. So it's pretty easy for me. I don't really have to deal with people much at all. See, I want to do it. But you have to deal with people. Mm -hmm. So your job, to me, is a lot harder than what I have to do. But see, I'm from Gatlinburg, so people's all over the right. place. You have to convince people they need your passion. You have to convince them that if I'm going to eat today, you got to buy my passion, mm -hmm. which is jewelry and whatever it is that is. And sometimes that's not easy to do. Because you could be very, very passionate about something. And you can love it. Green energy, green technology. I learned about beeswax candles this morning. I had no idea. <laughs> beeswax candles. She obviously has a passion. But in the same breath, I'm going to call you out a little bit here. You also said, i got to learn how to make money. <laughs> so that's, it's not an easy transition to make. It's not easy at all to learn how to do that. And I got really fortunate and really lucky that I had an idea that I was able to capitalize on, if you will, and be able to A, support myself, and B, get involved in this community. But it's, it's not easy to do. So, what about you? Um, well, I'm just uh, oh. Oh, I've seen them. the guys downtown. Mm -hmm. That's actually great. Yeah. Yeah. I ride bikes a lot. Road bikes. I don't do that stuff. That, that's a really good idea, actually. Yeah. Um, that's a very good idea. So, so your model, for example, I mean, you're. Uh, what would be your passion to get that started? What would we need to do? Uh, cycling and I would drive to the two. Continue. So you had an idea that says, I see a need, and I'm going to design a billboard or whatever and put it on a bike like these guys ride around town. Right. And yeah. That's a great idea. I've seen them in the Market Square. You guys ever seen them? Yeah. The billboards down there, it's a very, very cool idea. So, but what happens when somebody says, all right, yeah, that's a good idea, but I, I'm just, I'm not interested. Do you, you feel that sense of rejection at all? Oh, if somebody yeah. says, I'm just not interested? Yeah, so, I can't tell you. It's not even offered to someone. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> really? Right. <laughs> that part of it sucks. I, I mean, I'm going to ask for raising hands. I know everybody has been rejected one way or the other in the business idea. I've been rejected a ton of times. I mean, and sometimes I do take it personal. And even though I know it's not a personal issue, I took it personal. When Jim Haslam backed out of my event, even though the reason why he did was because it's the night of the state of state address, and his son is the governor, and he's giving the state of state address. <laughs> 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 I still took it from my personal. So that's fine. But I still took it personal. So the rejection part of it, there, there's a lot of veteran owned companies in this area that, that do not join the TVBA for whatever reason. And I can't convince them of it. So I do take it personal. So how do you take that passion that, you, that I still have and keep it going in the face of rejection? Yes, this is my dream. It is going to go. It is going to go. You're right. You do that. You're right. My dream, this is all the world I have left of my granddad. My business was named after me. 
Very cool. So there's an individual passion that puts that into it. That you're very, very, very true. What about you guys over here? What, what do you do? I know we rode Bob for a little while ago. He's over. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm Stan Johnson. I've trained inner city youth on green technology. Okay. So you guys know each other? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So cool. Very cool. So you're, you got two passions. I got two passions. So when you take those, combine them together, and be able to make that work. I love young adults. I see so much potential in them um, where other people might think that they're going to do something else. But just to be able to mold somebody into who they want to become in life is, is fantastic. Right. And of course, it's green technology is the future. There's no way around it. We just got to save our planet. Right. So that's. I've heard you say the same thing though about building a nonprofit, running a nonprofit. It's like that gets in the way of doing what I want to do, yeah. and then having to go ask them. Crazy. Leo knows. Leo, our 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 entities are very similar. Entrepreneurs in Knoxville, TVBA. We're we're. I tell people we are a chamber, basically, of veteran business owners and others. We got a lot of non-veteran companies as well, but we are very similar to what we do. Um, it's. There's only so many ways you can do this. So they do stuff a little bit different. We do things a little bit different, but it's at the end of the day, it's the same. I've had my feelings hurt with EFA. You want to talk to a sponsor and say, you got to be behind you. Talk to a bank. We were at a bank saying, hey, you got to be behind this. Our guys are starting businesses all over the place. They're open checking accounts. They're open savings accounts. You know, why would you do this? Right. And they said, well, you know, just don't know what you think about. <laughs> so that, that's a part of it. It is frustrating. It's very frustrating. And we all go through it. I mean, I'm preaching to the choir here. We all go through it. But, but what I want to resonate is, is how you take your passion and you keep going. I mean, you can't quit. I mean, the military kicks into me sometimes because we do not fail, period. I don't know what that means. I, I, no, I take that back. I do fail. I fail every day. I'll never quit. I do not know what that means. I fail all the time. But. I, mean, I make decisions, and two weeks later, two minutes later, I go, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> um, so that's just part of the growing curve that we do. Um, well, I, if I can piggyback on your point, John, I think the point that you find you asking yourself the question, what am I really passionate about, which is what you're getting us to think about. What am I really passionate about? And then how can I do something with that, whether it be social entrepreneurism, nonprofit, for-profit, whatever it's going to be. You know, Stan, I think, is a phenomenal example of that. I like to work with kids. I want to be involved in youth's lives. I want to show them that there's something bigger, that they can have, they can achieve their dreams, they can, you know, work themselves out of the position that they're in. Well, how am I going to do that? Well, there's, there's a million things you can do. He chose green technology because it's neat, it's cool, it's edgy, it's part of it is sexy. Let me get these kids involved in something where they can get their hands dirty and feel like they've got ownership in something, right? And now, all of a sudden, was it 25? How many was last year? Uh, it was 28. 28. 28 kids that otherwise may, maybe could have gone down a different path, but now got. That's fantastic. Hey, Mitchell. Tell me what we're doing. It's fabulous. <laughs> um, on the 19th, we're putting in an edible forest where our, in our community there's a food desert. High blood pressure, diabetes, all that stuff is rampant. Uh, child obesity. So we're teaming up with Green Mind Coffee, First Baptist Concord, Boy Scouts, and we're building an edible forest. We're putting in 52 fruit trees. Raised bed garden and, and um, a walking trail and all that kind of fun stuff to hang out. He needs people to help him out. <laughs> <laughs> he needs money. I'll ask him. I'll ask for money. <laughs> <laughs> I'll money for him. Thank you. Um, and see, that, that's also something that it kind of took off for me too when, when I got all this started. Is I, I was a guy in Knoxville. I was a guy on the highway driving up to work every morning. I had to be working at 8 o'clock. If I wasn't, I had to call somebody. I went to lunch at 12. I didn't go a minute earlier because it was frowned upon. I got back at 1 o'clock. I didn't come back a minute later because it was frowned upon. I had my little 10 days of vacation a year. I worked in a little cube there, my five little sick days. I mean, it, I was that guy. And I made a lot of money. And I was happy. Thought I was happy. Because every two weeks, you know, a little deposit would come in and everything was good and it was cool. Well, then when all that happened, I mean, it was taken away instantly. I was like, well, now what do I do? Well, then I started getting involved in this community more. And, and I kid you not, it's like I moved to a whole new town. I'm not, I've met so many different people now that I never, ever, ever would have came in contact with working in a queue in a building because I was stuck in that building every day. Now, my, my owners were out meeting people and doing all this stuff and getting on boards. And, 
doing all this stuff in the community, but I wasn't because I was in there every day grinding away, and that's what I did. And like I said, it's time I thought it happened. But then now, you couldn't drag me kicking and screaming back into that shoot. But I mean, well, maybe one day. You never say never, but uh, it'd take a while. Um, so that, that's a part of the, the, as an entrepreneur, that's something I encourage all you guys to get passionate about is this community. Because we do drive it. We do build it. We're building it right now with, with, with edible food farms and green energy and things like that. And what you're doing with the dogs, and you know, it, it builds, it makes this place a better place to live. So get passionate also about this community because it will help you. It helps you build your brain. And that's a part of the passion that, that kind of gets left out. I want to be passionate about what I do. Well, what you do is actually you. I mean, you got to get passionate about you. As, as Chris said earlier this morning, this, this whole day to day is about working on yourself. And at the end of the day, that's where the passion comes from, is from us as individuals. So the passion that we have is passionate about us. I've learned so much about myself over the last three years. Some good, some not so good. But I've, I've been able to take that and, and think about it a little bit and tweak some things and say, I'm, I need to get better at certain things. I had to get better at asking people for money. Um, I had to get better at speaking in front of people. I had to get better at communicating to people. Um, I'm an up here kind of guy. I'm not down in the weeds detail kind of guy. But I had to get down here too because I had people asking me all these questions. I'm like, God, it's right here, I think. But then I look at it again and it's not because it's, it's a 10,000 foot level and these guys need 1,000 foot. So I had to change a little bit about who I am. But that continues the passion though and it continues to drive. Um, and that's that's a big part of being passionate. Um, how about you, sir? I heard you talking earlier. You're a sales guy? No, I'm a covering lawyer. Covering lawyer never. They were marketing one thing. Okay. Now, who do you who do you sell for? I'm sorry. Amway Amway Amway, okay. Oh, yeah, you got me talking about Amway early. That takes a lot. I mean that takes a lot of salesmanship to get people to buy into that. I'm sure you get well, well Jackson, you know, that's what you're talking about. Right? It's pretty much the whole world on their side. It, it is. It really is. Right. The, you're talking about rejection. There's a magic word that I haven't learned a long time ago. It's called next. <laughs> you got some right? And no matter what you do, what your business is, the deal falls through. When somebody says no, you say no. Next. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. The other thing about change is how many people. My wife and I dated in the dark ages. Her family wanted to buy talk. <laughs> <laughs> and now I've got a button back here called some of them. So that was getting out of your comfort zone. Yeah, you had to go learn how to talk to people. Well, I made a conscious decision. <laughs> right. That's what you do. Right. You got to make, make conscious decisions. decisions. Right. And then you keep that passion going, though. If you're passionate about network marketing, you have to be able to go talk to people. Right. So you have your passion had to be you because you got to build yourself first. Right. And, and I tell military guys all the time, and it goes back to what I said earlier, being an entrepreneur is not for everybody. Some people, they just can't do it. And then that's fine, because it's good. I don't want you to do it. Um, but I tell guys who come out of the military, like, I can't find a job, I can't find a job, I can't find a job. It's like, well, what do you do? I got my resume, it looked great, and I that's cool, I just can't find a job. And I, I tell them that the conversation changes when you go business to business with somebody, not resume to business. I don't, I'm not looking to hire anybody, but I'm always looking for business partners. Always. Always looking for somebody to do business with. That would never turn down an opportunity to do business with somebody. But my company's not hiring. So if you take your resume, and granted this is what I did, and some people, they just, it doesn't make sense to them. Take that, slap a company name on it, put it in a little capability statement, and say, now I'm multi-marketing guy named Joe, and this is what I do for my business. Okay, well, maybe we can work together. But I'm not looking to hire anybody, but I could be looking to have somebody that I can do business with. And so that's just a, a paradigm shift that these guys got to do to take whatever that resume is, that whatever the resume is, hopefully they're passionate about it, but that's what they put on paper that they do. And so then you take that, put it in a business format, put a name to it, go register at the courthouse. I'm, I'm not saying go sign up and get your LLC and all that stuff put together out the bat, but you can get all that stuff later. But get legal, and then just go out and be a business. But people just don't click, go do that. So, um, 
Well, one last thing, and I'll talk about combining passions. Because my business, we, we, as a federal government contractor, we team with a lot of companies. We are a prime contractor for federal government contracts. We manage buildings for the Navy. Uh, we manage the Naval Reserve Center and Alcoa Highway. And we manage subcontractors in each one of those realms, divisions. Um, landscape, custodial, HVAC, that sort of thing. I'm not an HVAC guy, so I got to go find an HVAC guy to do it. Actually, NK Technologies, one that does our HVAC work at our building. Um, it's NK Mechanical. But, uh, so that's, you got to learn how to take your passion and mix it with other people. You guys are fantastic examples of the green technology. You mix those together and you go help each other. We put on an expo with Jim Haslam as a keynote speaker, and I needed an MC to do it. Well, I'm not an MC. I'm not. I know I'm not. Chris Coyne is. Chris Coyne is a fantastic MC, and he can run an event in the microphone on the stage. I doubt very seriously he wanted to plan an expo. I mean, he might want to. But yeah, he, I'm good. <laughs> he might want to do it. So I'll take what I'm good at and find other people that are around me. Chris would be a good example to say, look, I need to make an impression on 400 people this dinner. I'm not the guy to do that. But Chris is, and he's a perfect fit. He's great with the microphone, he's great with the crowd, and he's a military guy. So finding partners that have the same kind of passion that you do and bringing them together, it can only grow your business. It can only make you better. Um, we're not in this alone at all. And so if you find passions that can kind of come together and, and be able to merge them together, it, it just makes everything better in my mind. Some people are introverts and they don't want anybody around. They just want to do what they want to do. I don't know how you get customers that way, but that's, 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 that's works for you. You have to partner with bicycle riders and yeah. things on those lines. Yeah, I mean, recently, there's somebody else coming into our group that there's one thing that was going to be there. So, yeah. Right. And for Joseph. And for Joseph, right. Yeah. What, what do you do? Well, I help people go from being overwhelmed to having peace of mind. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you've got clutter and chaos and, and all the processes are falling apart and everybody's pulling you in a whole bunch of directions and you say, Well, would you just stop for a minute and let me catch up? Well, I go in and I get a little stop and let me catch up. About every day. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that, John, that Karen is a great example uh, of what you were talking about earlier with, with branding yourself and finding wh who it, because she is selling herself and what she does and her and her and, and, and what she's selling. There's nobody that doesn't need, nobody that doesn't need that at, on some level or another. So her figuring out who she is and and how that relates to the business and how to sell that further is, is going to be hopefully a crowdsourcing opportunity. Mm -hmm. I was at a seminar last year. At Texas A&M University, and they do these all over the country. But uh, it's called Entrepreneur Boot Camp for Veterans, and they take a class of veterans. There's about 25 of us in this group, and they do them at Syracuse, Texas A&M, LSU, Purdue, Cornell, UCLA. They do them all over the country, and they take you in for a week, and they help you with your business plan. That's it's really more your business. This is this is what I want to do. They bring in all these professors and all these industry leaders, and they help you formulate. This is what I want to do. And it was very, very helpful to me as, as a business owner and also as an individual. But one of the things that really sticks out to me what we learned that week, and, and one of my classmates kind of got an argument with the professor about this, of it's what you think is really cool, I might think is like, I don't need that. And it goes back to the whole rejection thing. And it's the ego marketing, so to speak. We think we got this great idea. And it's fantastic. And this guy in this class was... He had this idea, kind of like Kickstarter, we want to do it for veterans and you know, that sort of thing. It's like the, the, the professor was like, and it's already there. Why are you going to go recreate this when you have Kickstarter? Well, ours is veteran focused and all this other stuff. And I was like, all right, that's great, but there's probably not a lot of people in this room going to take you up on that. And he was like, no, I think everybody in here will. And the, the professor called him out to do a show of hands. How many people would take, the guy named Eric, Eric up on this idea? to raise money through a crowdsourcing thing like Kickstarter. And nobody raised their hand. And so he kind of got like, man, I got this great idea, but like nobody's going to do it. And one of the guys in the class, he made guns, uh, handmade guns, weapons, and all that stuff. Another lady made jewelry. And there was a whole bunch of different business owners in the room. 
And one of the things that, that you know, he asked for opinions around the room, and I said, I'll, I'll speak for myself. I would not buy a gun. I'm not a gun guy. I'm not going to buy a gun from you. I'm probably not going to do the Kickstarter thing because I'm not going to make any money. But there was a lady in the room that takes chocolate and puts anything on that piece of chocolate. Logo, picture, whatever you want. And actually, you had it last year at our expo. We do this little candy thing, this right. little piece of chocolate. And I just placed an order from here yesterday. Actually, that's what we give away as a TVBA at our expo is this little piece of chocolate that looks like a business card with our logo on it. And it's really good, and that's how I met her. So in that room with all these ideas, I basically said, I'm not going to buy a gun. I'm not going to buy jewelry. I'm not going to go get crowdsourced, but I will buy that candy. And so that's taking people's passions and saying, look, I'm just not interested. And I don't think Eric got his Kickstarter thing offline. I know that uh, Gina's still selling candy. I don't know about the gun guy. I'm sure he's probably booming right now. <laughs> so, I don't know what he's doing, but uh, I know Gina's at least got me as a customer. And so that's just an example of the passion of it. And, and another story I'll share real quick is, is there's a guy, he, he's a TVBA member, and he's got a great, great, great idea that he's been pitching to me for over a year now. And it's a great idea. It's taking surplus government excess material, which there's a ton of it, and there's a lot of newspaper articles how the government is really trying to get rid of all this excess war material, buildings, and all this other stuff the government has excess of. Well, he's an auctioneer here in town, and he's I, the passion that this man exudes is you know, Richard. Man, God, I love the idea, but I, I, I got to. I got to focus on this if we're going to do it. And right now, that's not what the TVBA does because he wants the TVBA to be the business vehicle to go into the government and say, we can sell this product. That's fine. We can sell this material to the government or to the community. Do it here in Oak Ridge and use veterans to do it. So we got a niche, we got the TVBA to do it. We got the business model, we got the plan, we got everything out. I mean, he's got it all laid out. He sent me email after email and books and pamphlets and all this stuff to be able to go do this. The passion this man had, he sees me a bar somewhere drinking a beer, he'll come up and he'll be like, hey man, we gotta do this awesome thing. I'm like, Richard, I'm just drinking a beer. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> so, man, God, I, I wanna do it now. A, I wanna do it because of TVBA, it, it is a good way to make money without having to go out and ask for it, do a bunch of grants, do that sort of thing. So it is a business model that we could potentially profit from. So that it's a win-win for us it is a need. There's a lot there. But it's a matter of now do I have the time to do it? Well, before I did. Right now we're playing an expo. I got my company that I deal with. I got all sorts of stuff. But my, my question to you guys to, to think about is Richard is so passionate about this. And my thought process to Richard is how come you don't do it yourself? Why do you need me to go out here and do this through the TVPA? You can set up an LLC today. You can do it right now. You can be done by this afternoon. And you can have everything you need set up by the end of the week. So how come you don't know? Do so just because you have a passion about something, you've got to take that next step and implement it. Because the idea, we all know idea people. We all know them. And I like to say I'm a doer, not a talker. I don't really talk much about what we're doing as a TVBA. You just look back and bam, it's done. Question. Talking about passion and that guy, when you see when you see people who have a passion, they talk about their passion, and they do what Richard is getting to do, putting together information, they're telling you what, what has to be done, and then they don't move on it. What does that say to you? It says to me that he's not really serious about it. Or it also says maybe he doesn't, doesn't have that motivation. gene motivation that whatever thought. Does it give you pause? It so gives me a lot of yeah. Yeah, That's why I've been over a year now going, Richard, I, man, this is a great idea, man. You gotta, mm -hmm. you gotta help me. I mean, what, what, what do you want me to do here? I mean, it's a great idea, but it gives me a lot of pause. And, you know, talkers to me are, are talkers. I mean, they just talk, and talk, and talk, and talk, and talk. There's one right there. Scott, you and that guy right there. <laughs> 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 so it's, you gotta be a dude. I mean, you can't just sit here and talk about it. That's something that's really struck me about the members of EFK, how many doers we have. Mm -hmm. like, uh, I've been to other organizations where I hear lots of talking and they never implement. Right. I hear ideas here and then I hear that they form a business and they're selling stuff like the next week, the next month. Right. 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 <laughs> that's, that's moving on. 
So that's uh, that, that's really it. I mean, that's all I have. I'd like to open you know dialogue. I don't know how much time we have, Chris. I mean, uh, we're, we're about we're about ready. Yeah, we can time for a few questions. Over. Okay. Just dialogue. Yeah. Don't be necessarily questions. You guys want to add anything to the conversation? Or ask me a question or whatever you guys want to do. I do. Actually, I have some information that I'll give you guys. Um, I have some flyers. Uh, I'll leave somewhere. Um, our event is January 28th to 29th. Um, it's more the 29th, just for vendors and exhibitors. It's at the convention center. It's free to come. You don't have to be a veteran to attend. You don't even have to be a veteran to exhibit. And actually, I'll talk to you about being a exhibitor and you as well. Is yeah. there space still for exhibitors? Yeah, there's space. Okay. Yeah. Not much. We're, we're about sold out, but that's uh, we'll, we'll make room. For it. But uh, it's really cool. It's um, very high energy. A lot of people come through. Uh, Scott's been, Chris has been. Sorry, when was that day again? Twenty eighth and 29th. Okay. <laughs> twenty ninth will be the actual day of. Um, uh, we'll do a presentation that morning. Charlie Thomas of the Thomas Group. Uh, they're at agency here in town. Uh, he's an army veteran. He's going to be the keynote speaker uh, that morning. So it's just a really cool thing. But I have some information. What kind of theme is uh, this concept? Man, it's a yes. Our theme is uh, celebrate the diversity of the East Tennessee business community. We got a lot of DOE contractors, uh, Y12, U4. Uh, I don't know how many Y12, hey, Oak Ridge guys here today, but I heard this earlier. Bechtel and Lockheed Martin won the Y12 recompete. I don't know if that means anything to you guys, but uh, that team won. Um, that's a pretty big deal for the Oak Ridge community. Who's going to win that? Y12 went through some issues over the summer, security issues. I'm sure you guys heard about that. And they, Y12 is having some issues. If what they do over there, it's, I don't know, man. I love Oak Ridge to the fact how it's so little people know exactly what they do out there. Iran's been trying to get highly enriched uranium for years. We got all you need about two miles down the road. So it's, it's all right there. Um, so it's, it's a pretty big deal what goes on in this community. Yeah. But uh, to answer your question, a lot of Oak Ridge <laughs> contractors, um, but we also invite our member companies. And we got guys in the beer cheese spread. We got guys that do Mary Kay Cosmetics. We got landscape companies. We have leadership development companies. And there's just a lot of a mixture of companies. And then uh, we invite a lot of nonprofits come. Um, a lot of the bigger companies that hire. Job Fair, Walgreens, CBS, Cisco, Dollar General, Brunswick Boat Group, Pilot Flying J, Wiggles. Um, so it's, it's big companies, little companies, nonprofits, government contractors that you never heard of, big companies that you have heard of. And our goal is energy. It's, it's a very high energy event. There's a lot of people there. We kind of keep everybody close together. We put TVs in the corners and play military movies and keep everybody kind of get everybody going a little bit. So that's the theme. This is where? The convention center. So free to attend. You don't have to register. Just I mean, if you want to booth, we'll talk about that. But uh, it is free to attend, and it's uh, it's pretty cool. It's, it, you didn't talk a lot about your specific business that you do. You said you sell a service to the government. Mm -hmm. What is that service? We are a, as I mentioned, a project management company. That's how we bill ourselves. And we, the government, the way they buy things, is there specific government portals that are out there that they solicit. Products or services, on. and the main one is called Fed Biz Ops, it's Federal Business Opportunities. You can go on there and you can search through there and what it is that you do, and you can find all these opportunities. And what we do is we look at something and say, okay, we can find people to help us manage this. We're like a general contractor, if you will. We go find teaming partners to help us manage a certain project. And by that meaning, the facility management project is the biggest one that we have. It's for the Navy. And we manage Naval Reserve Centers. We got the one on Alcoa Highway, one in Chattanooga, one in Louisville, and one in um, Memphis. Those are the four that we do in that contract. And we manage subcontractors in HVAC, custodial, landscape, um, pest control, trash pickup, all those services that are relegated to that building, we subcontract it out. And we are the project management company for them. And the government put out a bid and said, this is what we need. And we look at it, and you read it, and it's a thousand pages long, and you go through all this stuff, and you try to decipher what it is they want, and you ask them questions, and they say refer to page 10, so you don't get the question answered, and you <laughs> go through this whole thing, and then you try to figure out what it is that they want. Uh, I am passionate about project management work, and I'm not passionate about working for the government. It is, it's not easy. Um, they 
kind of blind. They just give you, this is what we want. And you have to figure it out and tell them, yes, I can do it, and here's how much it's going to cost. And the pricing is, is what every company struggles with. Because at the end of the day, it's the lowest price wins. And they look at your capabilities and they look, okay, you can do it. How much are you going to charge us? And it, it's hard uh, to put a price to. Uh, we do, we pick up trash in Memphis for the Army Corps of Engineers. We do snow removal for Army Reserves in uh, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. Window cleaning in Ohio. Uh, we laid sod and delivered rocker here to McGee Tyson. So we'll just find these opportunities. We sold iPads to the VA. Um, we sold uh, electronics equipment to McGee Tyson. Uh, we got a really good relationship with the buyer out there now. Paul Sales, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ralph Gooch, 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 Gooch. Yeah. Got a really good relationship with those guys. So they'll put stuff out to bid on, and they'll email us and say, hey, "Can you provide this?" And we'll say, "Sure." Here's the price. And if it's the lowest price, we win. We won our fair share, we lost our fair share. We lost by a lot and we lost by a little. And the ones you lose by a little are really hard to deal with because you're off a little bit. So that's what we do. And like I said, I'm passionate about the project management side of what we do. Dealing with the government and trying to decipher what they want. That's just part of doing business. So that's why we do, do that. John, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Well, we're going to take a break, but before we do, let's uh, let's try to figure out sort of what's happened so far, because we've had two guys with sort of similar stories, but with, I think, two different messages to deliver. Uh, the first message this morning was kind of a, a grassroots, detail, analytical look at uh, not only how to make your business successful, but to think about some of the questions that you need to be asking. Right. This afternoon was, people don't often like this, right? Rarely does anybody, even if you're okay with the spotlight, nobody likes to stand up here and just talk about themselves. <laughs> but I think it's important that we have people like that other than Leo. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's important because we need to see the final product sometimes. We, we, need to, we need to hear from people, they need to speak a first person, they need to be able to say, I did this, without sounding self-centered. Or, this is what I believe in. Or, this is what changed my mind or what got me on this path. Right? Because when they do that, it tends to resonate with the audience more. There's a connective piece to that. When you're sitting in an audience listening to a thought leader, somebody who's in an industry and they're sharing with you great, great stuff, it's great stuff. But you take bits and pieces of it away, whether you, whether you think their way or you don't think their way. When you're sitting up here listening to somebody sort of empty out and say, this is where I've been, this is what I've done, this is what I've found that's very, very useful, this is what sucks, this is the, the rejection, the fear of rejection, this is some of the challenges I've been through, it resonates more with an audience, right? So, so these two guys, I think, helped us, I don't think, I know, helped us set the stage for the final piece for today, right? And that is making this relevant to you. And you've started down that path already with doing some networking and talking about some of the takeaways. But when we come back from break, we're going to take a look at a video that I, that I promised to show you by a guy named Simon Sinek, right? It's a TED Talk, if any of you are familiar with those. Um, as a guy who makes a living helping people find and, and, and reach their goals and developing cultures and organizations, I've never seen a better video, nothing. Nothing I've ever seen is any, anywhere even close to this. There's a lot of great videos out there, but this guy, he gets right to the heart, right? And I can, I can practically, if I asked you to line up, not as a bobsled, but if I asked you to line up afterwards and tell me what personally you got out of this video that we're going to show, um, you wouldn't hesitate a half a second, right? It's that powerful. We're going to take that video and we're going to leverage that into this idea called motivate. What does it mean to be motivated? And then we're going to build an action plan from that. So when you walk out of the door today, you're going to have some entertainment value and some good networking value and learn some good information, but you're walking out of here with a plan for something that you can do. <coughs> okay? So we've got, uh, let's take 10, and we'll be back ready to go about 10 after 1. Thank you. Yes, it's closer.
And there, I may even have one in the <laughs> Yeah, I was just looking at the email. I don't know how many of these records were on the No, it was on six. It was on six. Yeah, because he looked at the shoe. Saturday, because I wanted to get to the field, and I was on the field. But I was just running around just getting. How can we tell? Oh, there's zero viewers. <laughs> that doesn't mean no one's jumped on. It just means there's no current active viewer. Um, I know we have a few that were on it. Yeah. I saw a couple on both of them on the stream and the stream. Yeah. Oh, it was just <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.